The following is an exclusive presentation of Jefferson Pilot Sports. The phrase Death Valley holds a foreboding spot in the mindset of the Virginia Cavaliers. Since the Clemson series began, they have walked into Memorial Stadium 18 times, but the Wahoos have never walked out with a victory. Now Virginia head coach George Wells brings his 11th ranked Cavaliers into Death Valley to try and alter history. But Tommy West Tigers are alive in 95 and ready to host the challenge. The stage is set as the Virginia Cavaliers do battle with the Clemson Tigers live in an ACC showdown at Death Valley. Coming up next. On a soggy Saturday in South Carolina, welcome to the Jefferson Pilot Exxon ACC Game of the Week. The Virginia Cavaliers and the Clemson Tigers from Death Valley. Hi everybody, along with Rick Walker, I'm Jack Corgan. Glad you could join us for a game still in September that looms as a pivotal one. Well, it really does. Both teams still in chase of Florida State, but they realize they can get in a big time college bowl game, and that's why you play in college football. The keys this afternoon, as it is so often, the quarterback position for Clemson, the emergence, the continued development of Neilon Green has brought balance back to the Clemson attack. Boy, an outstanding talent, and I credit his coach, Tommy West, for taking the big time pressure off this young man, allowing him to just play football, protect the football, and just do the things that can make this Clemson offense go. He'll be challenged by a very good Virginia defense, particularly in the secondary, headed up by Rondé Barber, one of the Barber twins. They had the big play a year ago to set up the winning field goal against Clemson. They have led the nation in interceptions the last two seasons. Boy, Rick Lance, the defensive coordinator, got to be tickled to death to have a guy with his abilities on his side of the ball. And this guy, the whole defense, they take the ball away. And if it's not one barber, it's the other who will cut you down. <laughs> Tiki Barber, I give this kid a lot of credit. He spent the spring ball, put on some weight, did not lose any of his speed. He can flat go. He's got an 81-yard run to credit so far. A running game will be a factor on a soft turf here this afternoon. Back with more on the conditions after this. Today's Exxon ACC Game of the Week is brought to you by Exxon, proud corporate partner of ACC football. Exxon, rely on the Tiger. By Continental Airlines, the official airline of the ACC, flying to more than 160 destinations worldwide. By Pepsi, nothing else is a Pepsi. By Lee Apparel, with new styles and colors, you'll like the way you look in Lee, the brand that fits. By CarQuest Auto Parts Stores. For the CarQuest store nearest you, call 1-800-492-PART. By your Carolina Chrysler and Plymouth dealers, home of the minivan store. By Burger King, where you can get your burgers worth. By your friends at Toyota. For quality and value that's simply the best, see your local Toyota dealer today. And by First Union, when it comes to service, everything matters. back to Clemson Memorial Stadium, better known as Death Valley, along with Rick Walker and Mike Hogwood, Jack Corrigan. Glad you could join us for a football game that seems strange, Rick, as we said at the outset, that you would have uh, on September, the, the second last weekend of September, right. a game that really might decide uh, a lot of ways what happens to these two teams by the end of the year. I think when you start the season off in the ACC and you're realistic and both coaches have been you put Florida State uh, out of your mind. You think if we can play well and maybe get a, a great game against them oh so be it. But we want to beat the everybody else. Well of course this is the site of maybe the best entrance in college football and a guy who has a ground level view of that and more down on the sidelines Mike Hockwood. There's really nothing like this Jack. Hey, uh, hi, everybody, and let me tell you, this is a great tradition because what the Clemson Tigers will do is that they will rub what is called Howard's Rock and run down the hill. 
Frank Howard, the legendary coach, brought this rock from Death Valley and told the Clemson faithful that it had magical powers. And ever since he's put it there for years now, as you see the rock, the Clemson players have rubbed that and run down the hill before each home game, believing that that gives them a little extra strength to go in battle against their opponent for that particular Saturday afternoon. You see the team ready to go. All the players will touch that rock, and then they'll come flying down the hill, and it really is an electrical moment. Here come the Tigers. It's Clemson and Virginia, an ACC showdown. Back here at Clemson, the Virginia Cavaliers will be receiving the opening kickoff. Clemson won the toss and deferred. George Welsh in his 14th season at Virginia. Nobody has won more games for the Cavaliers than he has. And Tommy West rekindling the Tigers spirit here at Clemson a big football game for his program in the rebound that they're trying to achieve. Terrence Wilkins and Pete Allen will be deep as you see the weather conditions here a cool day a light rain has fallen on and off throughout the morning as Jeff Save will kick it deep. We've got this game underway. It will come down to Pete Allen at his goal line. And he falls down at the two. And almost from the get-go, it seems the spirit of Death Valley climbs on top of the back of the Virginia Cavaliers. And they'll have to try and overcome it with their senior quarterback, Mike Rowe. The young man out of Randolph, New Jersey, has been outstanding in his last season and a half as the starting quarterback for the Cavaliers. Barber and Medley will line up in the end zone. Barber tried to cut outside, and Liam on Evans ran him down before he could get to the corner. Here are the Carolina Dodge starting lineups for both teams. Besides Mike Rowe and his backfield mates, Walt Derry will be the tight end, Patrick Jeffers and Pete Allen, the best of the wide receivers, veteran, experienced offensive line, and Doc, two great tackles. You gotta like both these guys, Harrison and Agostino. In order for this Cavalier offense to be effective, they gotta get it done. They go right up the middle again with Tiki Barber, and he gets it out close to the seven-yard line. Defensively, a young linebacking core, good up front group. The guy to watch, number 41, Anthony Simmons. Anthony Simmons is a young man that is very active. I like Patrick Sapp, too, number three. He can put pressure on the quarterback. And Brian Dawkins, the hitman, heads up a veteran secondary. Third down and five for the Cavaliers. Grove calling a play at the line of scrimmage. Play action. Hammered as he tried to throw it, Andy McCrory with the pressure from one of the linebacker spots, and Virginia will have to punt out of its own end zone. And one of our keys we talked about was to keep this crowd at bay. Well, they did none of the above. That's just good read and react pressure by the linebacker. And you take away the secondary, did a great job as well, but give Andre a lot of credit on that. Antoine Wyatt will be back to receive the punt from Will Bryce, who had a great game last week against Georgia Tech, averaging over 47 yards a kick. Flag flies as it's a high short kick. It takes a Virginia roll and will die just short of midfield, but let's wait and see what the flag is back on the three-yard line. We may have a procedure call, Courtney Mosey says, against Virginia. And Tommy West wants the football and has told his men to decline it. Illegal procedure on the kicking team. Penalty is declined. First down this way. So Neilon Green, the sophomore out of Yonkers, New York, will come out to direct the Clemson attack that is averaging 
over 440 yards a ball game the first time since 1950 that they've had that kind of offense through the first three ball games. Emory Smith and Raymond Priest are behind him and it's a reverse to Wyatt for the wall of blockers. Antoine Wyatt stepped out of bounds at the 36 yard line but it's a Clemson first down. What a way to start. Way for Tommy West to get the crowd involved in this. An offsides indication against Virginia. Obviously, the Tigers will decline it again. Well, if you're Will Young, big number 59, he's going to be the trailer. Watch it on your screen. He's your spy guy. And the key to this one is that White holds on to the football because the rest of it was just clean running. Doc Walker said that Virginia needed to keep the crowd out of it. It's not happening that way in the opening moments. Three receivers set. Priester cutting outside for good yardage, close to the 30-yard line before he's brought down by Anthony Poindexter and jo Joe Crocker. Lamont Hall will be the tight end. Tony Horn and Antoine Wyatt, the wide receivers. We told you about Smith and Priester. Good offensive line this way as well. Probably headed up by Will Young. Will Young is off to a great start. He's had two very nice blocks, and they got to get behind him and going up against Dwayne Ashman, who's been very effective for the Cavaliers. This time, Dwayne Morgan, the right tackle for Clemson, is ahead of the snap count. And it will make it a second and short into a second and nine. These are things you try to avoid, Jack, is, uh, from an offensive standpoint. Just to settle down. You know, you get the crowd going, but you don't want it to work against you. Dead ball, false start on the offense, five yards, still second down. You can tell it's emotional because we've had four penalties called already in the game. Defensively, the Virginia Cavaliers outstanding despite being a young group trying to play without Jamie Sharp or James Ferrier. Very good and the best secondary in the country in terms of interceptions the last two years. Green will put it up and it's just a little flare pass to Priester. Priester trying to get outside but there is good quickness among the linebackers and DBs for Virginia and John Harris the defensive end also got out there. Harris was all over he's active but Wyatt 19 again you know I talk a lot about the wide receivers who block watch this he gets in nice block on Ferrier that allows him to get out on the edge and that's encouraging to see little guys sticking the Rydell helmets under chins. Also encouraging for Virginia to see a guy 6'8 260 run down the wide receiver this time a running back. You see they are better than 42% on third down. Green will turn it around. Nearly picked off by Joe Crocker. And Crocker had nothing but daylight in front of him as Kenya Crooks had Crocker's step right in front of him. Mark it down right now is turning point early on in this ball game. Joe Crocker has a chance to have interception number two for the year. Hey, man, you got to catch that. You got green light. The band's playing the people up in Charlottesville going nuts, and you let it go through your hands. Jeff Sauve is going to come on and try a 51-yard field goal out of the hold of Travis Harvey. Now flags fly, and Virginia, I think, is going to call a timeout. 11.51 to play here in the first period. No score as the rain falls. Clemson to try a field goal. ACC football is brought to you in part by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. Jeff Save will try the longest field goal of his career. His first and only season as the field goal kicker for the Tigers. As the distance, can he curve? Just a little shy. So the gamble on the field goal try doesn't go, and Virginia will get pretty good field position on a surface that is less than ideal. Right, Mike Hogwood? Oh, you're exactly right, Jack. And what was a slow drizzle has now turned into a steady rain. It has really picked up down here on the field. And the problems that the coaches on both sides are worried about is the middle of the field. It's rained here in two Carolina Panthers games, and that's where the NFL hash marks are. And the field's really churned up a lot in the middle. Virginia with the ball at their own 33. 
Quick pass over the middle to Walt Derry. The big tight end has it over the 40. A pickup about eight on the play as Chris Jones and Mon Wilson, two inside linebackers, combine on the stop of Derry. Boy, Derry has really helped himself and helped the Cavaliers. Brooks is out today for him. They've got a couple of key players that won't be playing. Guys have got to step up. And that's an excellent example of that, especially Bobby Neely, who they rely on so much. Virginia likes to move around the tight end to change the defensive look as well as motion. That's Jeffers in motion as they give it to Tiki Barber. Trying to cut up inside. He's going to be stopped shy of the first down, I believe. Chris Jones again. The freshman out of Monroe, Georgia with a big hit. What I like about this is Mon Wilson, number 42. You watch him in your screen, folks, center. He's going to have the force right there. That forces the back inside. That's what you want as a defender. Bring the backs, especially guys with speed, force them inside. Third down and one for Virginia. Good percentage of conversion so far this year. They failed on third down deep in their own territory. Rowe with a play fake. Going deep for Jeffers. Can't hang on. He had gotten behind Dexter McCleon. They also had Tiki Barber wide open along the sidelines. But Jeffers was right there and couldn't get it. Jack, I like this play early on. As a coach, I know you, you, you softened things up for the second half. You got to take a shot at it. That ball is catchable. Now, maybe you might say the weather has had an adverse condi condition so far in result for the Cavaliers. Will Bryce will kick it away again with Antoine Wyatt in single safety. Pressure on the kick as Bryce got it off the side of his foot. It'll be down by Joe Crocker. Good pressure on the punt from Andre Carter. So what looked like a situation of Clemson being backed up, instead they'll get pretty good field position out near their 35-yard line. 10-18 to play here in the first quarter. We are scoreless. Clemson with their second possession of the ball game, along with Mike Hogwood and Rick Walker, Jack Corrigan. Glad you could join us for this key ACC matchup. That's Priester, the tailback. Got a couple before Skeet Jones and Paul London up from a strong safety spot. Chop him down out near the 38-yard line. You know, Jack, we talked in the open about the contrast between the two backs. Here's where the bigger guy, in my mind, has a little bit of an advantage. Clemson against Florida State ran a lot of one-back offense and spread out Florida State. They didn't think that would work as well against Virginia, and the field conditions may have also prompted more of the traditional eye formation. Green, the quick pass to Wyatt. Wyatt with good speed into Virginia territory for a Clemson first down. Percy Ellsworth ran him out of bounds, but I like the idea of getting Wyatt involved early. And I like the idea of going horizontal with the football in terms of going vertical. Stay away from those DBs. Put the ball out quick into a guy that can run with it. Get some help from your friends downfield, and you move the chains. 11th reception of the season for the junior out of Daytona Beach, Florida. Smith, the fullback, who was a load, couldn't get much going because there was good initial penetration by Tony Agee, and then Dwayne Ashman cleaned it up. Last year, Clemson had so much difficulty scoring that they have really gotten things turned around, in part because they settled on the young man, Neilan Green, at quarterback. And run the football. You can remedy a lot of things if you keep the ball on the ground. Tommy West talked about the inexperience of that line a year ago. Green skipped through the hands of Paul London as Joe Woods was trying to gather in the green aerial. We talk about this man, Neilan Green, but the Clemson coaches really talk about that offensive line none of who had played together a season ago. It helps out. And, and you know, the big thing about Clemson, and we talked with Coach last night, was just the tradition and getting the kids to believe that they can once again have a dominant football program. Rashidi Brown, a little jitterbug tailback, has checked into the ball game alongside a green. And he'll get it on the draw play. But pretty good pressure up the middle from Tony Agee, stops Brown shy. 
and it will force a punting situation again for Clemson. Yeah, they, were, they needed some movement out of round three and young. That time the defense wins. White and Agee played it real well. A little two gap technique. Chris McAnally will punt it away for Clemson. With Percy Ellsworth, the single safety. Good kick by McAnally. Can he keep it in bounds? No, it goes into the end zone for the touchback. 8-17 to play here in the first quarter. So far, it's been a chess match. Back after these messages from your local ACC station. All about Virginia's winless streak here at Death Valley, but everybody else talked to his team about it. First and ten for the Cavaliers. Mike Grow on the play action. Good protection downfield of Pete Allen in front of Dexter McLean. A gain of 15 and a Cavalier first down. Well, that softens things up. And you got to stay aggressive early on. I want to throw early because if the weather conditions worsen, I definitely want to take my shots now and try to make a big play. That's the way you catch in bad weather. As you know, coach, you got to get that body around and cradle that football. Well, Pete Allen felt early on he wasn't getting used that much, but the senior has caught a lot of balls lately. Little counter trap to Barber with Medley in front of him. Tiki Barber with good running room out over the 40. Brought down by Brian Dawkins and Andy Ford, and Barber is not getting up. Well, that's excellent offensive line play. Talk about pulling and trapping. This could be significant if something is wrong with Barber because Kevin Brooks is not even with the team with some knee trouble. Yeah, that's a good point. Well, maybe the guy throwing that block right there, Daryl Medley will have to take over, maybe a little more one back. Might have had the wind knocked him. Looks like right at the end of the play after he hit the turf hard, somebody landed on top of him, Brian Dawkins, right yeah. there. Oh, boy. Either that or hip flexor. Barber, who, as Rick mentioned at the outset, put on 15 pounds in the offseason, yet lost none of his quickness, looks to be okay. Medley will be the lone setback. Just beat the huddle clock. Quick little hitch route. Good anticipation, maybe too much anticipation by Dexter McLean. He might be called for interference. Yeah, McLean tried to take a page out of Barber's repertoire on that one and go for it. Pass interference on the defense. Spot foul. First down. Yes. They don't like it here, but it's a good call. <laughs> Key to it, Jack. Is there contact? A lot of contact. When the penalty is let or when the distance is less than 15 yards, it's a spot foul, but a first down nonetheless for Virginia. The counter play, Barber back in the lineup, weaving through traffic, bounces off Evans and gets it close to another first down. There's an indication Jack with his strength really paid off on the spin. Like the way they're getting out. Augustino that time pulling. Kind of reminds me of the old days with the Hogs and the counter tray. There you see Augustino coming up. Rarely he gets a nice block. You get a good seal by Derry. And here's a back that's just really picked things up now running a lot tougher than a year ago. Good second look at it. Why is it that we can't gain weight and maintain speed, Jack? What's the deal? Another penalty called on Clemson that moved the ball up five more yards and another Virginia first down. The Cavaliers' first drive of the afternoon with seven minutes to play here in the first quarter. Derry shifts to the left of Mike Grow, the quarterback. That's Jeffers in motion. Protection again. Jeffers sliding underneath has another Virginia first down. Evans on the stop, but not before Patrick Jeffers took it to the Clemson 29. Biggest drive this year for the Cavaliers. They need to score first. We've, we've, hopefully we've emphasized that and what it will mean to Virginia. Good pass protection. Right now the big guy's up front creating the pocket. That's Tuxedo passing there. And it gets Jeffries the ball his first of the day. Barber behind Medley stacked up by the Tigers. Short yardage on the play, 
Andy McCrory and Lamarick Simpson, a couple of veteran players for Tommy West's team. This Clemson team, 54 of their 85 players are freshmen or sophomores. That's future. You're talking about one of the keys right there in your pitcher. That young man, Anthony Simmons, can fly. He leads the team by nine tackles with 36. A true freshman out of Spartanburg. Clemson offside. Barber will be stopped at the 24, but with the penalty, Virginia will get the down over and be in short yardage territory. Carlos Curry trying to anticipate the count and was drawn into the neutral zone. Offsides on the defense, five yards, still second down. Credit to quarterback. Love QBs. A little non-rhythmic snap count, voice inflection, whatever it takes to pick up free yardage. Clemson with the four infractions already, a couple of them costly on this drive. Second down and short. Play action, throw with time, and a man, great catch, Patrick Jeffers inside the one. Patrick Jeffers, who dropped a long pass early in the game, comes right back to make a sensational grab. That's why I think it was so important just to get the ball in his hands two plays early as a possession reception. Get his confidence back. Now watch this. See the extension, the cradle. Boy, that's a big play. It really is. Another angle. Our guy's up top. Good work. That's a juggling act, but he keeps it in. Mike Grohl, four of six for 54 yards here in the first quarter. First and goal for the Cavaliers. Grohl over the top. Did he get in? Yes. Mike Grohl across the plane, and Virginia has the touchdown. Well, that's close. That's how he scored a year ago. Up in Charlottesville, that man right now may not look like a side relief, but I bet inside he's going, Phew. Hey, you watch that offensive line. Good play up front. Lachlan the center. That's where it starts. I tell you, Jack, that's a close one. <laughs> Jack? Uh, let's see. Jack? Let's see. Uh, <laughs> it's Rafael Garcia on to attempt the extra point for the Virginia Cavaliers. <laughs> oh, boy. Tim Sherman, the backup quarterback, the holder, high snap, but it was partially deflected. Liam on Evans came through and got a piece of it. And like last year, Virginia does not get the extra point after a touchdown. Back after these messages from Kirkwest Auto Parts. Just one touchdown a year ago in the 9-6 Virginia victory. And in that game, an extra point was blocked. We have it again. Liam on Evans. Watch number 16. That's a combination of low kick and great elevation. What a story with Leamon Evans. We'll talk more about that. He missed most of last season because of recurring headaches. Yeah. And why it happened is rather interesting. We'll get into that, but let's get back to football as Rafael Garcia will kick it off to Andre Williams or Antoine Wyatt. Garcia nails it towards Wyatt at the two cut back against the grain and slips his way up to about the 27 or 28 yard line. Good return. First Union presents around the ACC in less than an hour. NC State will be hosting the Baylor Bears and then tonight can Maryland stay unbeaten against last year's surprise team the Duke Blue Devils. Florida State will have little trouble with Central Florida and Wake Forest goes to Annapolis looking for its first win of the season. Spence Fisher with a big game last week against the cadets of Army. He'll need all of that and more against the Maryland Terrapins in College Park tonight. It's going to be a smoker. Out of the shotgun, Neilon Green. Fires low and behind Joe Woods. So Neilon Green having a little bit of trouble passing right now. A little problem for Mike Rowe as he engineered a seven-play 80-yard drive, 46 of it through the air for Grow. The touchdown coming on the dive over the top. Five minutes to play here in the first quarter. Neilon Green just one of four passing thus far. Option. And Green 
gets just a couple. Good pressure by Johnny Shivers, a freshman out of Fort Loud, Florida, as well as Tony Agee and number 94, Dwayne Ashman. You know, Jack, it's important, as I mentioned, to try to get the ball in the air as often as possible early on in bad weather, but they can't force it. And Green is a little tentative right now. Why wouldn't you be throwing against this Cavaliers secondary? Virginia with seven interceptions this year after setting an ACC record last year with 27 pickoffs, the best in the nation. Green on third down. Good protection, but overshoots Raymond Priester, and Clemson will have to kick it away. And he had nobody else open. That's the unfortunate part. When you go to a safety valve in that situation, it's because the secondary took away your primary choices. That's what Nilan is being told by Tommy West down on the sidelines as Chris McAnally will punt it again. Last one sailed into the end zone. Tiki Barber. The dangerous one back at his own 30. Flag on the play. Barber on the line drive kick. Takes it out close to midfield, but we might have an offsides call against Virginia. Elmer Bench was the man who made the hit. Courtney Mosey will tell us no, it's procedure against Clemson. And with the field position, I would assume Virginia will decline the penalty. Barber was one block Illegal away. Illegal formation on the offense. Penalty is declined. First down. Did not have enough men on the line of scrimmage. Barber almost broke that one, Jack. I mean, he was close. They will officially spot the ball at the 46-yard line. And Tommy West yelling out, give me a number so I know who wasn't on the line of scrimmage. So I can have a friendly chat with him. Virginia trying to take out the Clemson crowd here at Death Valley. They're up six to nothing. Hits pattern nearly picked off by Chuck Winslow. Jermaine Crowell running that hitch route. That's the second time Gro has called that hitch pattern, and there's been a Clemson defender right there. They got the interference one time. Here, Winslow nearly has the pickoff. Well, you see why? He's telegraphing. He comes right back. He's eyeball to eyeball with the receiver the entire way. That's a no-no, especially on this level. Allen and Jeffers will flank to the left of Mike Grohl with Medley and Barber behind him. Tiki Barber kicks it outside with lots of running room. Can they catch him? McLean knocks him out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Great seal block by Chris Harrison, the right tackle. Harrison with the seal. Deary also got him. He had the hook. He allowed him to get free. Man, it's got to be quite a thrill as an offensive lineman. See, there you see Walt. That's great push. They totally dominate on the line of scrimmage. When a guy with his tools running behind you, that's fun. Biggest run of the afternoon for either side as you see at ground level the good blocking up front by the Cavalier offense. Barber again, bouncing, struggling, fighting for a couple. Tony Planton, a sophomore out of Pendleton, South Carolina, number 96, the first man to make contact. Jack and Barber continues to progress in this fashion from one year to the next. I'm telling you, Terry Kirby did some great things at UVA, but I'm looking at some shades right here. This guy is really improved. On the season, you see today, on the season, better than six and a half yards of carry. You love to see that out of a tailback. Play action to Barber this time, and a little hook route to Pete Allen for a first down. Just outside the Clemson 10-yard line, down to the sidelines and Mike Hogwood. After that last touchdown, there was a sigh of relief on the part of the Virginia players. They know the curse of never having one here, but there was not a lot of back slapping and hugging. They came right over, sat down, listened to the coaches talk about what they had to do on the next drive. They're a very focused, very workmanlike attitude on the part of the Virginia offensive players. Well, you talk to the Virginia people, and they call the tie a couple of years ago a loss, and we lost the tie down here. Barber somehow finds room. Touchdown. What an effort by Tiki Barber. Man, that's special. That 
line is special, but that offensive line, I mean, there was a couple of milkshake blocks on this one. These are the kind as a back. You got to go down to the student union and you got to go, hey, Jason Augustino, this one is on me. Watch 77 right there. See, he just kind of plunges himself into it. Then Barber makes the great athletic moves, and the rest is history. Augustino forced Anthony Simmons to leave his feet and he came up empty as Jason Augustino powers Tiki Barber into the end zone. Garcia misses another one as he hooked it to the right. So it's 12 nothing Virginia with 248. George Wells <laughs> saying, are you kidding me? You watch that offensive line. Harrison, see, he gets a key block with the onside seal. Look at Harrison, 56. He drives half the, half the team down there. And then you watch Augustino leaving his body. There's Jerry. These guys downfield right now, they're just controlling the line of scrimmage. Jeremy Rayleigh, number 69, also helping. And my partner up there getting excited because that looks so much like the old uh, counter tray of his Redskins days. That's, that's a piece of work there. Problems on the field goal and extra point situations for both sides, particularly for Virginia. Mike, you've got something for us? Uh, on that last play, a lot of the assistant coaches were uh, asking Coach Wells, we ought to go for two, we ought to go for two to try to get 14. But it was George Wells who stepped in and said, no, I want to go for one, I want to go for one. And then he was utterly despondent and disgusted when they missed that uh, uh, extra point. And maybe he should have gone for two at the point. And he told a coach, he said, he looked over and he said, you were right, you were right. We should have gone for two. Yeah, he had momentum. I agree with it. Right now, they have the Tigers on the heels. It is 12-0 as the Garcia kick is handled again by Wyatt. Trying to get outside, has some space, stays on his feet, stayed in bounds. No, he stepped out of bounds. Back on the 31-yard line. Finally, a run out, out near midfield, but caught a piece of the sideline about 20 yards back downfield. That's good running. That'll make the highlight. Well, Neilon Green has to get something going. Tiki Barber with most of this one, 42 of the 54 yards in this touchdown drive from Tiki Barber. Yeah, they're putting pressure on now. Clemson got to get aggressive and must get on the edge and run the option. Green gives it to Priester, trying to push it outside. And Raymond bowls his way ahead, taking Paul London for a ride out over the 35-yard line. Now that's a run. Not real spectacular, but sends a message. Well, Tammy West told me yesterday that they felt good about their chances against Florida State, but spotted them 14 points and hated to be in that uphill struggle. They are in virtually the same situation here with poor field conditions because of the all-day rain. This time it's Emory Smith out over the 40. It'll be a couple of yards, maybe a yard shy of the first down. Skeet Jones and James Ferrier, two of the linebackers in on the hit for Virginia. Jack, they've got one element working for them, and that is the fact that they believe they can, should win. It's different. They believe they should win, and Virginia has to overcome that. It's going to take a lot more than 12 points to do it. Well, the history, the tradition of Clemson's success against Virginia here at Death Valley will hang over this game until the final zeros are up on the board. Emory Smith had trouble with a handoff, but no trouble getting the first down, pulling his way out close to the 47. Now, this is nice because you're talking about smash mouth football now. Clemson's being tested. Glenn Roundtree, 75 on the right side, that big offensive line. See, it looks like a stalemate. But what it does is it takes A.G. away from the ball carrier. So offense wins stalemates. 240-pound Emory Smith gets the first down for Clemson. They go back to the tailback Priester into Virginia territory. Percy Ellsworth runs him down, but Priester picks up a good solid five or six yards. Priester's got it going up. That offensive line, Will Young, Putman, and Roundtree, that triangle. Right now, they're starting to wedge things up the middle. Really starting to take, you know, get the football game back in their, in their favor. Clemson is averaging 255 yards on the ground. You might say, well, they've played Western Carolina and Wake Forest. They had 320 yards against Florida State. Smith again, close to a Clemson first down. 
We talk about the Clemson ability to run the option. That's because of that man. The bulk and the consistency of Emory Smith inside keeps you honest defensively. And watch that triangle again. See those guys up front. See, that's walking the dog there. Watch Roundtree. I mean, it got you on skates. So you can do this all afternoon long. Rain continuing to fall here, although not as heavy as it was before. It's really been a light rain, albeit a steady one, for most of the day. Third and short. Flags fly, and Jim Bundren was ahead of the count. Penalties have been a problem for the Tigers in the first period. Dead ball, full start on the offense, five yards, third down. Bundrum on this one, Morgan had one. That's the downside to playing in a wild place like Death Valley. Offensively, you have to hold your water. You can just see right there, Bundren saying he was having trouble hearing it, but it's also his fault, you know, when you're not sure. You want to get off the ball, but you want to make sure you get off the ball properly. Clemson will probably let the remaining seconds tick away and try this third down play in quarter number two. We have played 15 minutes of football here at Death Valley. Virginia with two drives and two missed extra points leads by 12. You're watching Atlantic Coast Conference football. The Jefferson Pilot ACC Exxon Game of the Week. The Clemson Tigers and the Virginia Cavaliers. Virginia leading the homestanding Tigers 12 to nothing. Did he leave one for you, Jack? Uh, that, that is nothing. Third down and five. You guys are trying to get me into something, and I'm going to step. No, no, not try. Back. Yeah, we're going to take you. There you go. Into something. And a lot of them. Third down and about five and a half. We'll call it six as Green from the shotgun. Connects. And I don't know if they'll get the first down. And we might get a late hit call at the end. Michael Allen out of the backfield made the catch. Tommy West wanting the extracurricular play marked off against the Cavaliers. Well, he finished that strong. Good confidence builder for Green. Nice pass. That's good hit. Now watch momentum. Does it stop? He keeps those feet going. The Clemson fans not happy with the spot from the officials as they will bring the chains from the other side and Courtney Mosey's crew will stretch him out and tell us that they are just a little bit shy. Big decision here for Tommy West as we take a look at the Lee Apparel first quarter stats. Virginia with the balance we expected. Clemson will go with their wham offense where they take Mark Landry, an offensive tackle, number 61, and put him into the backfield. Now they didn't do it with, well, actually, Glenn Roundtree goes into the backfield, and Landry replaces him on the line of scrimmage. So number 75, Roundtree, will be the lead blocker for Priester. No, it'll be Green keeping it himself, and he should have the first down. One thing, Jim Bundren, he's the happiest guy in the Tiger uniform because he had that offsides and he cost him some real estate. Now he can get back into his game plan. Fifth time in seven tries this season that Clemson has converted on fourth down and keeps their best drive of the ball game going. As they'll go back to a three receiver set with Hinton, Crooks, and Wyatt. Play action. Picked off. Joe Crocker stepping in front of Tony Horn picks it off down at the Virginia 10 yard line. Eighth interception of the season for Virginia, the second for Joe Crocker. And the streak is alive for 20 games. I mean, this is, you know, you think, yeah, you want to play action, but you got to have a safety valve. You know, that's a, I don't want to say wounded duck. That's a bad pass. 
And if you don't have a guy open, you want to get that thing to a safety valve. That was the best drive that Clemson had this afternoon, and now it's off and out. First down, Barber bursts through the right side. Barber looking for running room out to the 30-yard line. Leamon Evans stopped what might have been a run for the roses for Tiki Barber. Now, this young man has got it. Whatever he did throughout the spring, he ought, to, he ought to have a little school going right now. He could hire some people, sign them up. Honorable mention, all conference a year ago, trying to move up the ladder with some great plays so far here in 95. Throw on the play action. Dumps it through the hands of Walt Derry. Incomplete second and 10, Virginia. It is important on a day like today that as a quarterback, you put as many passes as possible right on the numbers. These guys have good hands on both sides, but this makes it tough. You see most of the players wearing the gloves that have become preeminent among receivers in football. On a rainy day, they're not the greatest thing going. And a lineman has to put his hands in the ground. See, Deary's in a three-point stand, so it's worse for him. Crowell in motion as Barber works the left side. Good pressure from Liam on Evans. We talked about Liam on before. He missed most of last season with recurring migraine headaches. A Clemson doctor watching a practice asked about his diet. They found out he's a chocoholic. When they got him off the chocolate, the headaches disappeared. And as a person who suffers migraines myself, there is no greater pain, and I can't even imagine uh, playing football with it. But Liam on his back and has been a force in the secondary. The Clemson crowd comes alive on third and long. Rowe going downfield, intercepted. Picked off by Dexter McLeon. McLeon to the Virginia 33-yard line. Only the third interception of the year against Mike Rowe as Dexter McLean picked it off. It is so tough. You're trying to throw downfield. Bad weather conditions again. If the receiver does not come out of his break, that time Dexter McLean does. He keeps his eye on the football. Now watch how quick the Clemson Tigers convert to offense. See, that's, that's training. That takes a lot of time to practice, folks. A little push off that goes against the receiver. And Derek Bird laid out of the cut. But Raymond Priester found Cavaliers in a hurry. Dwayne Ashman off the block. Chops Priester down right at the line of scrimmage. I'm sure Coach Lance had a lot to say to the Cavaliers when they went on the sideline. They were getting mauled up front. Each team trading off turnovers. Clemson trying to get back in the ball game. Trailing with two and a half minutes gone here in the second quarter. Priester again out of the one back inside the 30. Next week we'll stay with these Virginia Cavaliers as they host the Demon Deacons and Jim Caldwell's club out of Wake Forest. 12 o'clock kickoff time. Check your local listings for the station in your area. Third down situation for Clemson. They are one of five on third down. But they perhaps are in four down territory and again are in the field goal range of Jeff Save. Priester, not much. Tried to run a quick count, and Todd White, the defensive tackle, slid around the attempted block and stopped Priester well shy of the first down. Ashman White, A.G. Harris, that last series, they didn't get it done. This series, they have taken it on. I mean, that's the way you beat blocks. You beat blocks to the side of the back, you keep your shoulders square, and you attack. Clemson will go for it on fourth down. They converted a fourth down earlier in this period. Wouldn't run left, I'll tell you that. I'd run right. They have to get just shy of the 23 of Virginia. Fourth and five. Dump pass to Priester, no dice. Can't James Ferrier all over it. 
can't predetermine a swing pass. You got to throw a swing if the swing presents itself. They come out of the huddle, I'm coming right to you. Well, you're running right into the teeth of an experienced and very talented secondary and linebackers. That's a mismatch. Rondé Barber and James Ferrier were there almost as soon as the football was. The Cavalier defense holds, and Virginia gets it back at their own 28-yard line. James Ferrier's play has really picked up since Jamie Sharper went out with the injury. Counter trap. This is Medley as the one back. Doesn't pick the holes quite as well as Barber, Andy Ford, and Lamarick Simpson there at the 30-yard line. But I like the change of pace and backs. And one guy who maybe like hitting you with that you know, dull end, that sludge hammer, just kind of pounding on you a little bit. Plus, I think fullbacks block better if you give them a few carries every week. It's just like a big man running down in a fast break. You better reward him with the layup. You better reward the fullback. is tight end Derry who survives a big hit from Brian Dawkins as Virginia picks up the first down well Derry is just now getting back up on his feet but Doc Doc will hit you he's a young man that we're playing a lot on Sundays I mean he's got great speed a sludge hammer attitude and he finishes well this is where he's supposed to be no fear at all and a little intimidation, which I tend to like a little bit. Pretty good concentration for Derry, the junior out of Roanoke. Groh's interception earlier was only his third of the season. That's Jeffers in motion. Groh looking for Jeffers. It was deflected on the line of scrimmage. I think Carlos Curry, the middle guard, got a piece of that one. That little slip play with the motion man slipping back underneath the linebackers was used earlier by Virginia but Carlos Curry breaks this one up Carlos plays this well one of those one of those guys a true nose tackle and the good ones if they don't get pressure they elevate 954 to play here second quarter Virginia leading 12 to nothing short side what a play by Adrian Dingle a true freshman out of Holly Hill South Carolina who sliced through and dropped Barber in the backfield oh I tell you what for a freshman this is exceptional because fundamentally he's sound and that's an attitude I mean you, know, you just people don't give up plays like this you have to go take him see those shoulders square he gets across man and saves on that that's a big hit third and long Again, the Clemson crowd rises to try and support their defense. Grow intended for Allen off his hands and nearly picked off. Andy Ford did a great job on that. He really did. I mean, he trailed on that going against a guy like Allen with real quicks. That's quite an assignment. That'll keep the crowd going, Jack. See, that's, that's, that's being there. I mean, he's beaten a little bit, but he goes after it. Andre Humphrey nearly came up with the diving interception. Will Bryce will punt it away to Antoine Wyatt. What win we've had is at the back of Virginia here in the second period. And Bryce nails this one. Wyatt signals for, fumbles the fair catch try, but is able to gather it in at the Clemson 15-yard line. One tick less than nine minutes to play in the first half. Virginia with a couple of first-quarter scores leads by 12. Since 1955, Virginia and Clemson have played each other. It wasn't until on this day in 1990, keyed by the play of Herman Moore, that Virginia got its first victory over Clemson, 20 to 7. They have won just two times in a tie in the history, but two of those wins and the tie have come in the last five meetings. On the first down play of the next Clemson drive, that's Raymond Priester trying to pick his way forward and got about three, maybe four yards in the play. Wally Rayner, the true freshman, and Joe Williams in on the stop. 
second and six at their own 19. Green, good play action move to get open. And Nilon has a first down. Got John Harris into the air. Harris came back to tackle him, but not before Green picked up a first down. That might be the very play to help that young man from a confidence standpoint, because he's been struggling a bit, and sometimes a runner needs to run. You know, and needs to get the adrenaline going. Well, that's good fake, ball fake. And great hustle by Harris to come back and finish the play. Here's a guy who in high school played in front of a couple of hundred people. Now he plays in front of more than 70,000. Emory Smith, like he did against Florida State a couple of weeks ago, breaking tackles, finally ridden down by Joe Williams out near the Clemson 44. And when you're six foot, 240 pounds, and you got a low center of gravity, and you keep your base square, and you go north and south, you can make plays like this. That's exactly what Clemson needed. Joe Good. Williams got to be thinking about himself. Uh-oh. They stopped this guy. Glenn Roundtree had a great down block, the right guard. Here's Priester. Priester into Virginia territory at the 48-yard line. Joe Williams again. And Paul London have to come up from the secondary. We're calling off a lot of defensive back names. That tells you good blocking up front for the Clemson Tigers. It also seems like the uh, Cavaliers' defensive line is taking series. One series they're great. The next series they catch their breath. That time, Trevor Putnam and that group up front, man, had really nice blocks. They are very young on the front line. Eddie Robertson, the only senior they have among their down linemen. Smith again. Going to be just a little bit shy of the first down. John Harris on the initial hit. Mike Hogwood with more from the sidelines. You staying dry there, Hog? Uh, trying to. It's still drizzling down here. Number 94, Dwayne Ashman, defensive end for Virginia, came off the field limping on the last series. He did twist his ankle. He's not 100%, but after a couple of plays, the Virginia coaches decided to put him back in and see what he could do. Uh, even uh, less than full capacity, Dwayne Ashman's a pretty good football player. Rick Lance, their defensive coordinator, telling us earlier this week that both Ashman and Harris a little bit gimpy with ankle problems. Third and short. They give it to Smith, and Emery has another Clemson first down. He may never achieve the level of greatness of his brother Emmett, but Emery Smith is writing some pretty popular history here in Clemson. Tell you what, I, I don't know. I'm not going to take anything away from him because if a guy runs this hard north and south, it's just a matter of time. He's going to bring people down to the knees. I mean, this offensive line, see, this is how you coach it. Firing off the ball. Virginia has minimal penetration, but there's Smith running with authority. Quick little hitch pass to Alvin Wyatt. Antoine White, I knew I'd say his dad's name at least one time this year. <laughs> Antoine got only a couple. Good coverage by James Ferrier. They're trying to get the ball to Wyatt in space, but outside of that initial end around, Virginia's been able to keep Wyatt in front of them. They're going to have to sooner or later go downfield once again. I mean, that's not what they like to do, but you cannot allow those linebackers of Virginia to be disinvolved in the pass offense. Kelton Dunnigan has now committed fullback. He's in front of Priester. Priester gets just a couple. Todd White slipping off a block and making the stop for Virginia. Todd White, the redshirt junior out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, same high school as Warwick Dunn. A couple of pretty good athletes who ventured east and found success in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Got a lot of minutes last year, and they had an outstanding defensive line. You look at Fredericks and Ryan Keel, and those guys at uh, 50 year senior really helped the Cavaliers a year ago. Michael Allen has come into the ball game. He is alongside of Green in the shotgun. Elon Green looking deep for Wyatt. He has it at the five yard line. Rick Walker said you have to take that young man deep, and Elon Green and Wyatt. With a beautiful connection. And you know, I, I can't say it more so. When you got a threat, you have to keep threatening. And this guy sooner or later will get you one. There's Rondé Barber caught him right between the inside out technique defensively. And when you see zone, you got to get rid of the ball quick. See, the ball is there. He makes the great catch. And the Tigers prowling. 
That's a great catch under perfect conditions. That's an unbelievable catch in the rain here this afternoon. First and goal. Priester, nothing doing. Johnny Shivers, the freshman out of Fort Loud, Florida, with good penetration. Boy, Dwayne Morgan took a hit on that. That offensive line didn't regroup on that. Cavaliers woke up. Virginia defensively allowing less than 115 yards of ball game on the ground, so it's a challenge to run against the Wahoos. Now they played great team defense. When a year ago you look at what Virginia did and you look at Washington State, how they played defense, and I mean these guys get after you. Time out on the field, 356 to play in the first half. Clemson trying to get on the board. Crucial sequence here for sophomore Neilon Green. He has its second and goal at the Virginia six-yard line, trailing 12 to nothing. Emory Smith still fighting, finally thrown back at the three-yard line. That's what I'd do, and I'd do it again. You'd have to stop Smith. I wouldn't know, I wouldn't complicate this issue. They have not been stopped yet this year when they've had first and goal. And now they'll go to their wham offense, bringing Mark Landry into the ball game at guard and moving Glenn Roundtree at 285 pounds into the backfield. Robert Jackson is also there, three and a quarter. Third and goal. Smith had trouble with the handoff, fights it to about the one yard line as Anthony Poindexter kept trying to pull him back. I'd give him more Smith. I'm telling you, I'd give you a Smith overdose. You got to win it up front. See, they allow too much penetration. Can't get your fullback hit in the backfield. That's a great effort on both sides. Virginia never giving up. Smith carrying it on. Todd, look at he wants it. See, they want it. Todd White was the man with the great penetration, number 91. Fourth down. Priester bouncing. Did he get in? No. Just shy of the goal line, James Ferrier. Oh, that's dynamite. That's dynamite defense. Ferrier comes up, going against a great effort. Virginia holds with 2.34 to play in the first half. Here's a look at this week's Burger King Top Ten fan poll. The fans voting for who's number one. This week's number one team, no surprise, the Florida State Seminoles. And I'll say most of the folks there belong in the top ten. You can check out tomorrow's or make it Monday's USA Today and Sports Illustrated to find out who's number one in the Burger King Top Ten fans poll. For the first time this year, Clemson stopped on a first and goal situation. Virginia takes over inside its own one-yard line. Rowe just trying to find any kind of traction. Got maybe a half of a yard. Here's the fourth down stop. Boy, Todd White, great penetration. Ferrier comes over. There you see Jones. And I mean, that is Joe Crocker just holding on. I mean, this could have gone either way. Smith with the lead block, which is stuffed by White. And that really starts it. Todd White in the backfield makes the key play. On third and fourth down, yes. Todd White with the great penetration. Bro nudged it out across the one, second and nine. And Bro again will do the same thing. Clemson with two timeouts remaining, and they are going to use one here with 148 to play in the first half. Clemson with wins over Western Carolina and Wake Forest sandwiched around a loss to Florida State here in Death Valley. Virginia had the heartbreaking final second loss to Michigan, then came back in the closing seconds to beat NC State after walloping William and Mary, and last week in maybe their most impressive ball game, running over the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets who had stopped everybody else on the ground until last Saturday in Charlottesville. That really impressed me. 
Well, lots of half time activities here in Clemson, albeit a little bit soggy, and Mike Hogwood will profile what's upcoming. Well, maybe the sun will come out at halftime, Jack. Who knows? Well, we're going to visit with Clemson basketball coach Rick Barnes, who has quite a role with this football team. We'll talk to him about that. We'll have our Ice House Player of the Week, and we'll run through all the statistics in the ACC as we check out and see who the leaders in the different categories are. And all that's coming up in just a couple of minutes at halftime. Mike, earlier in the ballgame, you talked to us about the conditions of the field. Have you had any insight from the players or coaches whether they're having any difficulty? The outside of the field is in great shape, and it's what we talked about early. The middle is continuing to get worse, and it will be a factor in the second half, I think. Third down situation. Third, and let's call it about eight. And Grove gives it off to the tailback and he'll be stopped at the five by Tony Planton. Tiki Barber got a little more space for Will Bryce. Clemson burns its final time out to stop the clock with 141 to play here in the first half and they should get pretty good field position after the Bryce punt. The announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. This broadcast is a copyright presentation. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of the Atlantic Coast Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. All right, Coach Walker, do you go for the block here because of the conditions, or do you figure that you're going to get good field position and using the sidelines and incomplete passes manipulate the clock? Well, I don't know about sideline incomplete passes with the Clemson offense at this point. Uh, I go for the block. Will Bryce has a long of 47. The conditions are not what punters like, and I want to make his world, you know, even worse right here in Death Valley. I go after it. Will Bryce, who has done an outstanding job the past couple of seasons for Virginia, has been second team all conference, both in 93 and 94. This will be the second time in the game that he'll have to kick out of his own end zone doesn't do a whole lot for your punting average the important thing is don't get it blocked you know right get now, it away he's thinking about catching that football and not slipping keeping good you know good placement and getting it off Walt Derry the tight end is also the long snapper you can see Bryce about a yard inside the back line of the end zone Antoine Wyatt out near midfield to receive the kick and they have the return on as Bryce nails another one Wyatt at his 43 has a seam Antoine Wyatt gets it back to the Virginia 42 Joe Crocker was the man who knocked him off balance That Wyatt, he's special. <clears throat> he really is. I mean, you can't go wrong. Get the ball in his hands. And like the great ones, he's always a threat to break it. See, he stud stumbles up on his own feet. Cracker got a piece of him, then he banged off one of his own players as well. First and 10, Clemson. Green. Out of the backfield to Priester. Breaks a tackle. Raymond Priester will get the clock stopped. On a second effort, first down, catch and run. Rondé Barber on the hit for Virginia. And that guy, that's just a great effort. I'm just about to think, well, that kind of pass doesn't help you. Well, it depends on who you throw it to. And in this case, Priester turns it into a positive play. 118 to play. Courtney Mosey's officiating crew moves the chains 10 yards ahead, signals the resumption, and Clemson will get it underway. and has room in front of him. Looking for help to get to the sidelines and gets out of bounds after picking up about three or four and then a flag at the end of the play. They made sure they got the flag on that one. That was a little, little sideline pressure. George Welsh knowing that's not what his team wants to have happen. The first assessed penalty of the ball game against Virginia. Personal foul on the defense. And I don't know if that wasn't a pre predetermined play. That was a pretty faint move on the on the pump. I think they wanted to run that delayed quarterback draw. 
Yeah, he's got him out of bounds. He's got him out of bounds. To this point, Rondé's got to let go. Got to let go. At the end is what got it. Big penalty infraction against the Cavaliers. Inside the Virginia 15 now, and at a minute five is an eternity for the Tiger offense. Draw play to Allen. Nothing doing. Poindexter up quickly from the secondary, and we're going to get a penalty flag against the Tigers. That's Cavalier defense. We talk so much about their interceptions, but their great lateral pursuit is just... Holding on the offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Still first down. Anthony Poindexter is another of the young Virginia defenders. He is listed as a strong safety, but the redshirt freshman many times plays as a nickelback like a linebacker. Watch him converge. See, watch him getting off blocks. What happens with Skeet Jones, he gets held because he's flying to the football. Puts it back to the 26-yard line. Sixth penalty against Clemson. Pressure, and Green will go down. John Harris with the biggest sack of the ball game all the way back to the Virginia 38-yard line. Boy, whew, that was strength. John Harris had a tremendous spring. He was voted the most improved player. This is some of the improvement, folks. Watch it. Watch it. Third sack of the season for Harris. And Green in trouble again. Spins out. Looks downfield. Finds Crooks, who goes out of bounds at the 29-yard line. It gives them a chance at a field goal. It leaves them still... 25 yards shy of a first down with 13 seconds to play. Harris almost had another sack, but he ran out of gas. I mean, his engine, his engine is low right now, folks. He was struggling to try to get there. That would have been exceptional. Would have definitely taken them out of field goal range. Clemson down to 10 on the Hubble clock. They have no timeouts left. They're going to be hard pressed to get this play off. And I think they're going to get penalized. They get their men out. One second. Just beat the huddle clock. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. Like they did. well, that's their own fault. They have nobody to blame on this one. Dead ball. Delay on the offense. Still third down. I said it was fourth down before it is third down but now it again is third and long third and almost 30. John Harris with seven tackles including that sack already in this football game. They're rotating Morgan and Jackson on him in. Could have had another person to that deal. Green firing it out deep and it's a jump ball situation falls incomplete. I think Nilon wanted to put that up in the air, but he got the nose way too high on it and never got it to the end zone. Now with five seconds to go, you'd either try a 52-yard field goal or you throw it to the end zone and hope you can win the jump ball. Keyword, end zone. Not up in the air, but in the end zone. See, this just this is this is boy, you're going to get some Virginia Cavaliers secondary. They get most of these balls. Marcus Hinton prevented the interception so now they'll try it on fourth down green will step up and let it fly and it falls incomplete on the final play of the first half the virginia cavaliers use two first quarter touchdowns and then two defensive stands in the second quarter to blank the clemson tigers in the first 30 minutes of football leading 12 to nothing here at halftime at Death Valley. Let's go down to Mike Hogwood with George Welsh. And we have Coach Welch here. Coach, uh, happy please with the defense so far in the first half. Yeah, well, it's, you know, it's almost impossible to hold them without to zero points the way the, that's the last part of the second quarter went. What are you going to tell the team at halftime? What do you have to do in the second half? Well, what we've been preaching all week, we play 60 minutes with poise and confidence. I don't know, and, and execute. That's what we got to do. Okay. George Welsh, his team's up 12 nothing. We are at halftime here in Death Valley. We'll be back with our halftime activities coming up in just a moment.
Today's Exxon ACC Game of the Week is brought to you by your neighborhood Exxon dealers and distributors who invite you to try Exxon gasolines with the power to drive down maintenance costs. Exxon, rely on the Tiger. By your hometown Carolina Dodge dealer and the new Dodge. By Burger King, where you can get your burgers worth. By your Carolina Jeep and Eagle dealer. By Outback Steakhouse, no rules, just right. And by your friends at Toyota. For quality and value that's simply the best, see your local Toyota dealer today. Today's Exxon ACC Game of the Week is brought to you by Exxon, proud corporate partner of ACC football. Exxon, rely on the tiger. By Lee Apparel, with new styles and colors, you like the way you look in Lee, the brand that fits. By your local Mazda dealers. By Continental Airlines, the official airline of the ACC, flying to more than 160 destinations worldwide. By your Carolina Ford dealer, home of five of America's top ten selling vehicles. And by Pepsi, nothing else is a Pepsi. Clemson will have the football to start the second half and to get some insight into what the Tigers want to do to overcome this 12 to nothing deficit. Let's go back to the sidelines. Mike Hogwood with Tommy West. Thanks, Jack. Tommy, what did you tell your guys in the locker room? Well, we had our opportunities in the first half, and we didn't cash in on any of them. I thought our defense did a nice job. After we just had too many penalties and giving them too many chances. What do you have to do here in the rain to come back in the second half? Well, somehow we got to find a way to throw the ball. We've been very poor at throwing the ball today. So, you know, we think we can run it some, but we got to be able to throw it. Are you worried about field conditions? Is that going to affect uh, you at all? Yeah, well, it will. It has some, but it's they're playing on the same field. So, I mean, we just got to go play and take advantage of opportunities. All right, good luck, second Thank half. Thank you, Mike. Tommy West. And those conditions continuing to deteriorate here as that rain, it's, it's never really been a hard rain, but it is a steady rain that has fallen and certainly kept the crowd down. They sold over 70,000 tickets for this one, but I don't think we had that many in the stadium at the start of play. And looks like a few uh, have looked for drier places to go here for the second <laughs> half. <laughs> Clemson won the toss and deferred in the first half, so they will get the ball to start the second half with Antoine Wyatt and Undra Williams back to receive the kickoff of Rafael Garcia. Just a five yard difference in terms of total offense between the two teams, but as Tommy West indicated, the penalties and the inconsistencies of their passing game were crucial to their inability to score points in the first half. Garcia with a booming kick coming down to Wyatt on the goal line and he started to slip and wisely took the touchback. Clemson will have it at their own 20 yard line. Clemson had pretty good field position for most of the first half. But with the exception of the long drive that ended on the one yard line, most of the time, not much transpired out of it. Nealon Green in the first half, Nealon was 7 of 14 for 73 yards and a touch or an interception. Three of the balls going to Wyatt. And as Doc said, they want to keep giving the ball to Antoine. Here's Raymond Priester banging off tacklers and taking it out to the 24 yard line where Todd White number 91 is there again. That time Emory Smith misses missed the block doesn't get the lead and it shows you what kind of back Priester is you know he can avoid the initial defender and still square up and make up pick up yards. Tony Horn trying to do the crack back on Rondé Barber was close to making an illegal block. Option. We haven't seen much of that. Green keeps it, and Todd White is there again, scraping along the line of scrimmage. Nealon gets it out Nealon to about the 27-yard line, where it'll set up a third and three. I'm surprised we haven't seen more of that. I thought early on it would be, you know, part of their attack. You got a quarterback with Green's abilities, uh, and your offensive line was teeing off. I mean, the, there was a time in the second quarter they really had control of the, of the heart of the defense. They don't want a three and out to start the second half. They need to convert here and they give it to Priester and he does not get it. Skeet Jones and Paul London 
deny Priester the first down by less than a foot. Boy, Prondexter, he comes up, takes on Emory Smith. I mean, there's a function at the junction. This is big time collision. 240 going against 200 pound freshman. That's the way you get it done. And see, this is what makes Virginia special. They have guys that can get to the football. Chris McAnally to punt it away. Not a very good kick, but no chance for the return for Barber as it rolls dead at the Virginia 31 yard line. So Virginia will get decent field position after a punt of 39 yards. You're going at halftime, and the one thing you want to do offensively is try to pick up at least two first downs and get a good look at what the second half plan is defensively. They don't get it done. Virginia started many of their drives deep in their own territory, had the back-to-back -to -back touchdown drive. Counter trap play with Barber. Blockers in front of him. Tiki runs out of bounds at the 37-yard line. The gain of six on the play. Leamon Evans and Andy McCrory running him out of bounds. Boy, Walt Derry's 87 tied in. Bob Neely not playing today, and Walt has really picked it up. Only not only as a receiver, but blocking well. Barber had 88 yards in the first half, so he's well on his way to another 100-yard afternoon. Counter trap again to Barber. Went right through the tackle attempt of Lamarick Simpson. Carlos Curry then knocked him down a yard shy of the first down. Got away from his convoy. When he sits up and they, and they go over this and they watch the films on Sunday night, he's going to say, oh, shucks. Should have just stayed with it. So you have Slocum on the pull. You got Harrison. You want to hug it a little closer. And I think he'd have had a lot more success. Third and one situation for Virginia. In the first half, they were 0 for 5 on third down. Barber pushing it outside, and Dexter McLean would have none of it. Two good defenses standing in there and taking the best and forcing a punt for Virginia. Great penetration. You know Barber's going to get the football. No mystery to that. But see, this time Clemson controlled the line of scrimmage. That's Simpkins getting up at the line of scrimmage. Curry, White, they really made the difference on that. Allowed Evans to get in there and finish it off. And Brian Dawkins just buried Medley, the lead fullback, on the play. So Will Bryce will punt it away again. to get away from it. It takes a Clemson bounce and is touched just beyond the 25-yard line. 11.36 to play in the third quarter. Each team has gone three and out to begin the second half. There have been some great Clemson victories, but none greater than trailing 28 to nothing at Charlottesville. Come back and on that Nelson Welch field goal, the Clemson Tigers unbelievably beat Virginia 29 to 28, marked in the cemetery the greatest comeback in Clemson history. Louis Solomon was the guy who keyed that comeback coming off the bench. Neilon Green trying to key a comeback here for the Tigers. Priester, big hole up the middle. And Raymond Priester out close to first down yardage. Paul London and Anthony Poindexter on the stop, but the running game is there. They have to try and get the passing game to join it. Talked a lot about Emory Smith early on in the first half, his running ability. Now he's really blocking, and all you have to do is give Priester a crack, and he'll open it up into a sludge. Second and short, perhaps this will be a passing down. No, they'll give it to Emory Smith, and he bangs away out to a Clemson first down off the left side to about the 39-yard line. Poindexter there again along with Percy Ellsworth. You know, Jack, Clemson has an ideal offense if you're up by two touchdowns because they can just consume the clock. They dominated the control of that in the first half. Now Emory looks like he's a little, a little banged up. So Kelton Dunnigan will go in at fullback. And he's the lead blocker for Priester, who was hit in the backfield. Skeet Jones blitzing on the play. Shot a gap and dropped Priester for a loss of a yard. 
hard to imagine that a young man like Skeet Jones, so aggressive, is really into poetry. I don't think he's thinking about it at this point. That's good. That's good football. And I tell you what, if you're a linebacker, a pop like that is pretty sweet music. <laughs> I'd like to hear some of his poetry. Second and eleven. Green dumps it to Priester. Good block downfield by Antoine Wyatt. Raymond Priester run out of bounds inside the Virginia 40 at the 37-yard line. Antoine Wyatt closed off the Virginia pursuit to create the lane for Raymond Priester. He really did. That was it. Wyatt with one block, Hanton with another. Watch it now. See, it's not easy to, to stay engaged. See both guys down. That's all you can ask for. That's all you can ask for, folks. Twenty-four yards on the pass completion to Priester. And now he gets the football still on his feet. Raymond Priester to the 25-yard line. James Ferrier rode him to the turf, but Raymond Priester just absolutely refused to go down. Just gnaws on you. Here's a guy, oldest of 10 kids, so you know that he understands willpower, and this is a pretty good example of it here. So he kind of bends that back. Two arm tackles, three arm tackles, making four arm tackles, and his guy is still going towards the end zone. Another Clemson first down. Priester again. Priester to the 21-yard line. Oh, it's fun Wayne to block Ashman on the stop. Jack, it's fun to block for a guy like that. It really is, because you don't necessarily have to move a guy right or left. All you have to do is keep pad placement, keep a hat on the body, and a guy like that will just kind of nudge you forward. 6'1", 220-pound sophomore out of Ellendale, South Carolina. He's got all those younger brothers and sisters, and he wants to be a great school teacher. Priester trying to step through a tackle of Anthony Poindexter, but Camp, the redshirt freshman, doing a good job in the place of the injured Jamie Sharper. We know why he wants to be a teacher. Oldest of 10, that's all he's been doing. That's right. He's teaching and guiding and changing diapers and feeding and instructing. I think it's admirable that he'd want to do that at a higher level. Poindexter fought off the block of Emory Smith. I am very that's impressed yeah. with Anthony Poindexter. He's out of Forest, Virginia. And man at Jefferson Forest High School is a, quite a player. That's a free play. You got to run those. And Priester might have the first down. Virginia beating the snap count, it appeared. Courtney Mosey says yes, offsides Virginia. Very critical of our offense that will stop on a free play. Run it out. I mean, let the guys in stripes control the game. You play football. Offsides on the defense. Penalty is declined. First down. The yardage was virtually identical, so why not reward the young man who worked so hard to get right. those five yards? It puts Priester over 100 yards for the afternoon. Very determined drive by the Clemson Tigers. They have been down here three times and have come up empty. Priester this time finds the going a little tougher. At the bottom of the pile is John Harris. Elsewhere in college football, that is a surprise, at least here in the state of South Carolina, that the Kentucky Wildcats have the edge at halftime. Steve Tannehill and the Gamecocks are always watched closely by the Tiger fans. Hobson Priester cuts inside the block of Tony Horn to the 10-yard line. John Harris is there again for Virginia. Good defense. That really was. They reacted very well to the option. Maybe one of the reasons that coaches decide not to run a lot of options. I mean, you watch Harris just. See, that's just, he forces it, keeps his shoulder square. That's Poindexter again. This kid's a freshman. I mean, fundamentally, he is great. He's where he should have been. You don't always see the option out of the one back. Clemson tried to surprise Virginia, but the Cavaliers were ready. 
third and five. That's movement and movement again. I think it was the left guard, Will Young, who was a little bit ahead of the count. Well, these Clemson fans, you can hear them yelling up the stand. Will Young. Dead ball, full start on the offense, five yards, still third down. Not only the eight penalties have frustrated Tommy West, but it seems like that all so often they have come at the most inopportune time. Bingo. Like third and one. Now it goes to third and ten. There was an earlier sequence where they had second and short, went to third and long, and had to go to four downs to get the first down. And didn't get it. Four for 12 on third down for the Titans. Green with time, dumps it to Priester, takes a big hit and will be stopped shy. Greg Terry, redshirt junior out of Danville, Virginia, with a huge pop on Raymond Priester. Yeah, I call these sparklers. You get hit, you, you remember how sparklers go off, you see all that bright lights? That's what he feels right there, right in the face, baby. That's a sparkler. So they bring Jeff Save on to try a field goal. It will be a 27-yard attempt. And Save puts Clemson on the board. 6-13 to play here in the third quarter. Clemson trying to mount, mark, mount the comeback back after these messages from your local ACC station. Clemson gets on the board on the 27-yard field goal by Jeff Save as they go 64 yards in 11 plays, all but the final four yards on the ground. If you're wondering, that little dump off to Raymond Priester that picked up 24 yards, the official stats crew ruled that a lateral. They said the pass was actually backwards, so it becomes a running play. That's why you credit the yardage to Priester, why Raymond is over 100 yards on the afternoon. But he'll enjoy that. Pete Allen and Terrence Wilkins deep to receive the kickoff of Save coming towards Pete Allen on the bounce. Allen with great speed, but he is stopped at the 28-yard line by Brad Pope, a junior out of Alpharetta, Georgia. And Allen comes up a little bit gimpy. Baylor has a touchdown on the board in the second quarter at Raleigh against the Wolfpack of NC State and Virginia Tech leading by a field goal over the Miami Hurricanes in Blacksburg. The Clemson defense exhorting the crowd to give them that little extra support. Virginia went three and out on its first series of the second half. Barber in the backfield. Brett Williams. Ball was fumbled, but Mike Rowe was able to fall on it. Brett Williams slicing through. And that's Groh's biggest play. Harrison on the out block. I mean, Slocum didn't react as if he was supposed to block it. A little mix-up on the offensive line. And great play. Clemson. Virginia with four offensive plays here in the third quarter, and they have done very little. Play action, Groh. Downfield through the hands of Pete Allen. They had the first down. And Allen on a rainy day with those wet gloves couldn't grab it. Got to bring it into the body. I mean, Allen, maybe not 100%. Now the gloves go off, and players always do that after a drop. But it wasn't the gloves. It's just you got to get up and make the basket catch on this. Bad weather conditions. Good pass pro. Nice strike. See, that's, you got to catch that. You may catch that and break it. Virginia has not converted on a third down today. 0 for 6. Growl in motion. Grow with good protection. Firing it downfield. Jeffers has got it. Patrick Jeffers is gone. Touchdown, Virginia. 71 yards. Patrick Jeffers. Big play, Jeffers. Previous long of 52. He just shattered that. Can you imagine this? 0 for 6 on third down. That's stepping it up. Pass protection is the key. Mike Groh gets a chance to take a long time. He puts some oomph into that one. Jeffers makes it happen. You know, this kid 
came on last year real strong and you just knew he was going to be a special athlete here in Virginia. Big target at 6'4", 220, and he outran Dexter McLeon, made the catch, and Virginia answers the field goal with a stunning 71-yard touchdown. Another tough snap. Sherman got it down, and Garcia gets his first extra point of the afternoon, but George Wells <laughs> is still unhappy. 14 to play in the third quarter. Virginia trying to win for the first time at Death Valley, up by 16. Welcome back to Clemson, Virginia, with the longest touchdown pass of Mike Rowe's career, 71 yards to Patrick Jeffers, shocks the Death Valley crowd. It really changes what Clemson will do now on offense the rest of the ball game. And that's bad news if you're a Tiger fan. I think they're going to stick to the ground because the ground game has worked for them. But now they got to push the ball downfield and hopefully get a big play, get the ball back in the hands of Wyatt. But that was really answering the call. 0 for 6 on third downs, and you hit a big one. Garcia's kickoff coming down to Wyatt at the six yard line. Antoine. Looking for a seam, ran into his own man and goes down at about the 25-yard line. Let's take another look at the grow Jeffers connection. One thing about Jeffers, it looks like a string of eight years plus of a big receiver at Virginia. Here's a kid, 200-400 meter champion at Fort Worth County Day School. He never lost a race. And folks, he's not going to lose this one either. He just has that little thing about him that once he gets the football, you're not going to catch him. From Herman Moore to Tyrone Davis to Patrick Jeffers, big targets who can run are always a pleasure for a quarterback. Green on the bootleg, has some room, flags fly, and the football flies. Virginia's got it at the Clemson 41, Joe Crocker. Penalty declined as Joe Crocker comes up with the turnover. His second turnover of the ball game. Had an interception in the first half. Yeah, he, he needs to have the football. He needs to improvise. Coach West is saying just protect the football, especially in wet conditions. Now, is it stripped or does he just fumble? Oh, hopefully, he's not trying to change hands. If so, Tommy West just got to settle him down. No panic by Coach West. Not a defense, just tested. Virginia looking for the knockout punch. Rowe finds his tight end, Derry. And Walt has another Cavalier first down at the Clemson 25-yard line. Chris Jones on the stop for the Tigers. Virginia sensing a chance to put this one away. A little play action. You know they're going to get back to their fullback eventually. Boy, Derry has just done a fantastic job. He's been blocking well, been catching the football. Love those tight ends. Yes, I knew it. I knew that would happen one of these times. The smartest guys in the field. Barber on the counter play. Tiki gets four tough yards. Andy Ford, the man on the stop for the Tigers. Boy, Andy played that real well. From a technique standpoint, I mean, both sides, these are very well coached teams, and they've been really playing good football. Just that Clemson now needs some plays behind the line of scrimmage. They need to force a fumble. See, that's the way you coach that. I mean, don't let a guy get on the outside. He does a good job because it's a good back. Twin against twin. Andy and Peter Ford against Tiki and Rondé Barber. Okay, play action. On the sidelines, what a job by Jeffers to protect the ball from Andy Ford when Ford thought he had the pickoff. Yeah, boy, that's scary. Now Jeffers looks like he's hurt a little bit. Patrick missed uh, some time early on the Michigan game. So, you know, you don't want to throw balls like this on the outside. You know, you're up, you're at a place you've never won. Ooh, that's on the knee. Jeffers taking himself out of the ball game. You can see him hobbling a little bit. Yeah, that's mild sprain action there, baby. Measurement shows that the Cavaliers have the first down. But of greater concern right now for UVA, the condition of Patrick Jeffers. Oh, when you combine that with Allen, who's been hobbling a, a little bit as well. But it's fullback time. 
Four catches, including the 71 yard touchdown. Now, 13 receptions on the season. He has caught for as many yards today as he had on the season. Fans reacting to Walt Derry moving, but he's the tight end and he's allowed to move as long as he resets and the defense doesn't jump. And you see Mike Grow, give him credit on that. Michael saw it. He paused in his cadence and allowed it to, to get set. Anthony Simmons, who was the leading tackler for Clemson coming into the ball game, made the stop there. But we have not called the freshman's name too often here this afternoon. Only a couple of times in rally and those guys up front give them credit. They've been all over. Rallo on motion. Counter trap Barber. And there's Anthony Simmons again. Well, he must have heard, he heard us. you. He heard you. Hey, Anthony, I was behind you, man. You were doing a great job. <laughs> Let's get an update on Patrick Jeffers from Mike Hogwood. Well, where Jack is a sprained ankle, he'll getting it taped up right now. He'll probably be back in a couple of plays. There's a ball controversy going on over here. Virginia is claiming on some extra points that the Clemson ball boys have been sending some wet balls onto the field. So the referees have determined that some Virginia managers now serve as ball boys when Virginia has the football. <laughs> Do you blame them? <laughs> Home field advantage. Third and seven, the Cavaliers, one of seven on third down. They pick up the blitz, but it goes through the hands of Crowell and then through the hands of Andy Ford. Boy, Andy, you got to get that one, pal. Mike doesn't give them up a lot. This is what the Tigers need now defensively. See, now they got a blitz. You got to send people, which leaves you open and susceptible to a big play. Boy, it's just, that's a catch. Jermaine I'm Crowell. Sure Jermaine wanted that one. I think the arms were a little short. A little alligator, Sean. <laughs> Any guy that's ever played receiver has had his arms shrink at least once in his career going across the middle. Rafael Garcia on to attempt a 30 yard field goal try and he nailed it. Virginia answers the Clemson field goal earlier in the quarter with 10 points. The Garcia field goal coming after the Clemson turnover and Virginia now is out to a 22 to 3 advantage. But as we have said in the history of this rivalry, Virginia will not feel comfortable until there are three zeros up on the scoreboard and they are still on the top end of the score because strange things have happened, particularly in the last couple of years of this series. And you know it as well as I do. It really bothers you as a player. We went through it when I was in school at UCLA, 18 years, never beaten Washington up in Washington. And it, it is very difficult mentally to get over and the Cavaliers still aren't out of the, out of the woods. Next week, we will see the Virginia Cavaliers again as they are home at Scott Stadium to tangle with the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. 12 o'clock, the kickoff. Check your local listings for the station in your area for the Exxon ACC Game of the Week. Andre Williams and Andre Humphrey now will be back to receive the kickoff of Garcia. High short kick, Humphrey at the 23. And gets it out to about the 33-yard line, where Andre McNeil makes the stop. So following the field goal by the young man from Barcelona, Spain, Virginia has the 22-3 advantage. Smith comes out of the ball game and Clemson will go with the one back four wide receiver set and they will give it to Priester and there is nothing going on at all White Harris and Skeet Jones there for Virginia Boy, John Harris we talked about his improvement he was voted the most improved player in spring ball and those guys up front have just been bringing it the only problem is that they've not been able to sustain consistency throughout the game, but they have a series on and a series where they're not as, as strong, and this one, they're strong. Injured Cavalier on the play. Trying to see by process of elimination who that might be. Well, they 
are. They've been a little thin too. You look Kevin Brooks not playing Bobby Neely already out Jamie Sharper out and it's Eddie Robertson the fifth year senior out of High Point North Carolina who will have to come out of the ball game. Robertson who is one of their better pass rushers has incurred some problem with his left leg. And you don't like it when they don't put pressure on it that uh, that makes you think it's something worse than usually it is. Clemson has dominated the clock. They've run 16 more plays than Virginia in the ball game, but they trail by 19. Green with time, and the pass is off the mark for Tony Horn. Joe Crocker, who has been Mr. Turnover today, was the closest man to it, actually. Joe's going to get a lot of pressure and a lot of work because of Mr. Barber on the opposite side. You know, being the off corner is interesting. Those guys, they love it because it gives them some opportunities to get interceptions and be actively involved in the game. Third down, 8 of 16 on the ball game for Neilon Green with the one interception by Crocker. And you see what Clemson has done on third down. Again, the four receiver set. On the draw play to Allen, but the flags fly again. Dead ball, full start on the offense, five yards, third down. Yellow will not be the favorite color of that man. Tenth penalty of the ball game against Clemson. And the third down plays in the offensive line has really hurt him. Had three times now that they've just nullified opportunities to make plays and move the chain. You get in that two point stance to better pass protect, but you got to avoid the rocking. They didn't do that. Green trying to avoid the pressure. There's John Harris again. Nilon gets rid of it, has a man open. That's Allen, and he gets it out to about the 37 yard line. That was a terrific effort by Nilon Green to avoid a huge sack. It really was. It's one of those clips that you go ooh and ah, but they don't fit. See, I'd like to see him out on the edge a little more. So when he could have these acrobatic moves and pick up some positive yardage. You don't coach this. I mean, this guy just has this little hit at the end. And anybody but uh, Virginia, maybe you can make a play, but see, they swoop to the ball. Man, they can run. Wally Rayner and Skeet Jones stopped Allen Shy on the first down, so Chris McAnally will have to punt it away again. Pressure from Virginia, and it's a high short kick. Hits in the mud and really took all the bounce out of the ball. Virginia will have it in good field position, just beyond their own 32 yard line in the final minute of the third quarter. Clemson trying to get to a more balanced offense is still a team that doesn't want to have to come back from the deficit they have right now. They are still not a quick strike team. No. Tommy West is making the transition to more balance, mm -hmm. but they're a team that wants to get on top early. They need to. They can hog the ball, but they need points. Jeffers back in the ball game, and he goes in motion with the left ankle take. Counter trapped to Medley now, the tailback. And Darrell takes it out to the 39 yard line. Andre Humphrey on the stop for Clemson. Big Chris Harrison once again, St. John's High School star out of Washington, D.C., man. Really, a guy who's able to overcome adversity out for the 93 season with the injury. Former defensive player, now on offense. I mean, very proud leader of that Cavalier offensive line. it just before the quarter comes to a close as Medley is held up by Warren Forney. Forney, who has been battling some knee problems, getting some time here, makes the stop on the final play. 15 minutes to play in Clemson. The Tigers trailing Virginia 22 to 3. Fourth quarter action here at Clemson along with Rick Walker and Mike Hogwood, Jack Corrigan. Glad you could join us. Virginia facing a third and three. Mike Grow flushed out of the pocket and throws it away. And then a flag at the end, and we may get intentional grounding by Mike Grow. Pete Allen was in the neighborhood, but not close enough. Tony Planton on the pressure, and now 
a personal foul maybe added on to it. Yes, Mike Rowe losing his self-control doubles the damage. A little of that linebacker mentality I talked about early on. I mean, he, I like the guy, feisty guy, won't back down. But you got to use good judgment, especially in a place that you've never won. You do not want to get the Clemson Tigers fired up. Intentionally grounding the ball on the offense. Five-yard penalty, loss of down. It's fourth down. Then we have a dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct on the offense. Half the distance to the goal. Fourth down. Mike Rowe picks up back-to-back -back penalties, only the second and third infractions against Virginia on the day. And in, instead of a situation of fourth down and punting from at your 40-yard line, Will Bryce will now have the ball spotted at the 12-yard line, and he'll get this away right about his goal line. You better hope he can get it away. Antoine Edwards is back. High snap. Bryce fields it. It's a short kick into the wind. Takes a Virginia bounce, however, and it ends up being a great punt for Will Bryce wow. to the 39-yard line. 49-yard kick by Will Bryce. Let's take a look at the Leo Apparel stats after three quarters. And when you look at the passing yardage of Clemson, that's the area they wanted to improve upon. They've not been able to do it, even though they're close to even in total yards. They've got to throw it better because they're down 19 points in the fourth quarter. Yeah, they're limitless. They really don't have enough options offensively. And this guy in your screen has got to play a bigger part of that on the perimeter. They fake the draw play. They get it out to Wyatt. First time that Antoine Wyatt has touched the ball in the second half. And he picks up a Clemson first down to the field and Mike Hogwood. Virginia's probably going to have to go the rest of the game without Eddie Robertson. They've taken his shoes off, cut the tape off, and put ice on it. He's got a sprained ankle. And uh, when you start cutting the tape off, it's a pretty sure sign you won't be back. Time will become a factor, but there is still time. Clemson down three scores. Green pass, Green lost the handle on the ball, and Virginia recovers. Third turnover of the afternoon, Nilon Green fumbling for the second time, trying to set up the screen pass. The ball just slipped out of his hands. That happens in games in wet weather. That's why you have to be very selective. You know, in the play call and what you want to get accomplished. You can't all the time, you can't always use everything in your repertoire. I mean, you have to keep that in mind. Now, what happens on this play? He gets back, he fake pumps in this kind of weather. It's just bad. The play wasn't covered. I mean, I mean, the play was covered. They were all over it. Boy, Dingle. Tony Dingle, he had that rush figured out. Left with the fumble recovery. But an inspired Clemson defense, Andre Humphrey. Stacks up Tiki Barber for a loss on the play. Eric Bradford also helping out Clemson's defense, knowing, hey, we've got to do the extra now because the offense hasn't been able to get on track. This is their only chance. Take away Jeffers' big touchdown pass. And the Tigers defensively, I mean, they're bringing it. That's smash mouth defense. Second down and 11. The Clemson 42. That's Allen in motion coming into your screen now. Burrow gives it off to Barber, who slips the tackle. Tiki Barber passed Humphrey, chased out of bounds by Leamon Evans, but it's a Virginia first down as Barber cracks the century mark. Mon Wilson had done his job. 42, he clogs it up. You talk about a field, there's a field. He meets Medley right at the point of attack. Lachlan with a good block from the center position. And then Barber does his thing. And this guy, he's got to be fun to block for. That's all I can say, folks. Watch those white shirts downfield, trying to get on the orange shirt. Most times you don't like to see a guy going east and west, but it worked that time. Bro with a good play fake. Down for Derek Bird. Good coverage by Brian Dawkins and Dexter McLeon. You kind of get the feeling that Mike Bro might have called that play. You know, he's still fired up. He's thinking, let's stick it to him. 
tries to get Bird down the field. Virginia has had some fourth quarter difficulties defensively. Of course, the 18 point comeback by Michigan in the season's opener, and then the great rally by North Carolina State in the fourth quarter at Raleigh a couple of weeks ago. But Virginia came back on its own in that fourth quarter. The Tiki Barber touchdown in the closing seconds. Obviously, the turning point of the season for Virginia's hopes. I agree with it. NC State, what a murder that was. Second and ten, the rain coming down maybe as hard as it has all day. Barber trying to step through a couple of people, was able to get two or three yards when it looked like nothing was there. Evans and Williams there for the Tigers. Boy, it appeared he had nowhere to go. Looked like White was all over. He found a way to get out of it. Clemson, though, effort has been there. Kids playing hard. They really are. You don't want to be the first group to let the Cavaliers beat you. You know, things like that when you're in college, man, you, you remember that. Tiki Barber unofficially with 117 yards now in the football game. He came in as the number three ground gainer in the conference. And Barber gets it again and goes nowhere. Brett Williams and number 87, Eric Bradford. Bradford, another one of the kids, a true freshman. When Clemson played a great ball game here at Death Valley against Florida State, a lot of the Clemson Tiger faithful became convinced that this team was back on its way to a 10 and one season, they thought. Tommy West, to his credit, said, we're better, but we're not there yet. We have an awful lot of youngsters playing on this team. Give us a chance to mature. Oh, he's right. And he understands that his offense is trailing a bit, but the effort is there. He's got some great athletes, and the tradition is overwhelming. He's got to make plays like this. Blocked and picked up by Anthony Simmons. Simmons up the sidelines to the 36-yard line. Clemson blocking the field goal try of Rafael Garcia, and things are not over yet at Death Valley. 11.39 to play, Virginia on top. A soggy afternoon here at Clemson, but the Tiger fans still believing they can manufacture a miracle comeback and preserve their unbeaten string here in Death Valley against Virginia. Neilon Green can't go anywhere because James Ferrier is there to make the stop. Down to the sidelines to Mike Hockwood. You may be wondering with uh, the Clemson offense struggling, why they maybe don't change quarterbacks, go to another one. Well, they really don't have another throwing quarterback who's available. Louis Solomon is the backup quarterback. He's known as a runner, and he works all week at wide receiver. They do have a couple of freshmen, but they haven't decided which one of those they're going to redshirt yet, and they may redshirt both of them. And this is pretty much Elon's Green's game from here to the finish. Green on the draw play to Priester. And not much there. Greg Terry coming up to make the stop. Anthony Poindexter as well. Well, you're not going to take anybody out with the draw when you get when you don't throw downfield that well. But what I was starting to get into was the fact that Green was threatening the edge. He was getting on the grass. I'd like to see a little more of that on a you know wide field. I would have guessed from Clemson's perspective, they did not want the rainy day. That sounds surprising to talk about the Clemson attack worrying about the rain. But with the young quarterback, it seems to have bothered him more than Mike Rowe. Priester trying to find some place to go. And Raymond fights his way very close to the first down. What an effort by Raymond Priester, the sophomore from Allendale, South Carolina. Yeah, it's just, it's just, man, I'm speechless. That is just super effort. Now he just needs more Tigers to rally and, and hopefully this thing can get contagious. Basic swing pass. He comes out, could be stopped there. Maybe stopped there or there. So that's four arm tackles and he's taking it upfield. Now either the Cavaliers are running out of gas or this kid is just special. He came it within a couple of inches of getting the first down. There's 10-11 to play, but when you're down 19 points, Tommy West has no choice but to go for it here on fourth down. Hey, I get Emory Smith in the ball game. Number 18 at a whale of a second quarter. He's only had one carry since. 
and I put it on his back. See if they go to their wham offense. They do. Glenn Roundtree, the guard, moves into the backfield. Emory Smith is back into the game. Fourth and inches. And Green will get the first down himself. That will momentarily stop the clock with 10.03 to play here in the fourth quarter. Clemson basically has to score every time they have the football down the stretch just because you're not going to get it that many more times. They also need to consider some hurry up offense. I mean at some point they're going to have to pick the tempo up. Clemson has nearly a 10 minute advantage in terms of time of possession. But Virginia with that 71 yard touchdown pass to Patrick Jeffers from Mike Rowe midway through the third quarter looms as the big play of the game. They fake the draw play outside to Wyatt. He ran before he had the ball secured. You try sometimes to make the big play happen. You got to do the basics first. Yeah. Well, you know what's going through his mind. Jack, you're no wide receiver. You're starting to think, I have to make a play, and I need to make it now. And right now, you're trying to go without the football. You're thinking about where the defenders are, where the sideline is to save some time, but you got to catch the ball. Green throws it out to Priester again. And Ferrier was there to force him back inside, where Percy Ellsworth cleaned it up. Kind of Randy Barber there as well. Kind of hard on a track like this to, to stop and stutter and not just keep his momentum going north-south. James Ferrier, a parade All-American, just runs as well as any linebacker you'd find in the country. You can see the difference in terms of what Virginia has done to that Clemson offense this afternoon. Ferrier, the junior, played his best game of the season a week ago against Georgia Tech. He has been awful strong today. American running back. Downfield, the man is open, and it's caught by Tony Horn. Tony Horn at the 30-yard line of Virginia, slicing between London and Ellsworth to gain the first down. Now that was a big play. Here's a young man who was a state champion in the 110 high, so he can get up as well. There he see he makes the catch, cradles the ball against the body. That's the way you catch in wet weather. And normally you don't tell a wide receiver to leave his feet for a ball he can reach for, but in the wet weather, you do that. Go get it. Gotta go get it. Green rolling out, downfield, has his man Marcus Hinton out of bounds at the 19, another first down. Rondi Barber, the guy they picked on that time. You never know what play will get a group fired up. The block field goal obviously has done it. See, that's a nice stop route. He's leaking a little bit. You don't like to do that. You like him to come back to the football. But they made it successful. Penalty flag on the play. Courtney Mosey tells us it's holding against Clemson. Boy, the penalties have just been backbreaking for Tommy West Tigers. I don't want to be at that practice Monday. <laughs> <laughs> you know, coaches can handle if somebody's just better than you. But as you know, Jack, and, and the kids that you coach, when you see the little things and where kids make mental errors, that's what's right. It's first and 10 penalties. It makes it first and 21, 854 to play in the fourth period. Green to the sidelines and nearly picked off by Joe Crocker. Trying to get to Marcus Hinton. Joe Crocker has had himself quite a football game this afternoon. Joe Crocker is quite a football player. And they're going to be all over the now. They're, they're natural ball hawks. And now when you have to throw, you play right into their strength. You can see the Virginia coaches reacting positively when they thought it was the pickoff. Joe just couldn't hang on to it. Neilon Green 11 to 22 for 129 yards. He's been intercepted by Joe Crocker. And another flag. And we're going to have a legal procedure. Clemson having trouble staying still when their offensive line is in a two-point stance. Dead ball, false start on the offense. Five yards, still second down. 
last year was a big transition because the previous Clemson teams threw the ball very little. And as Tommy West tried to diversify his offense, it was a, a rude awakening for that offensive front. They've gotten better, but they're still struggling with some of the rudiments. Green goes down in the grasp of Dwayne Ashman. Great stunt by Ashman, the loop stunt. He came through untouched. Yeah, it's, I mean, everybody here at Death Valley knows you have to throw, including the Cavaliers. So they're going to play games with you. That allows Rick Lance, the defensive coordinator, to play those games. See, White goes in, Ashman comes around the horn and makes the play. Second sack of the afternoon, and from first and 10 that they would have had at the 19-yard line, it's now third and 34. Wow. No. T.E. stunt. Green steps up and lets it fly down the sidelines. He has a man and it's caught. Tony Horn beat Joe Crocker, and it's first down Clemson at the 13-yard line of Virginia. Man, when they decide to do it, they can do it. Why? Because they've got players. Speed will do this each and every time. Just not bad coverage. He just can't keep up with the speed. Could have got a flag on that because he's holding on. Joe Crocker says, hey, I got to do the best I can. This guy can fly. They convert a third and 34. You don't want to be at the defensive meeting in Virginia tomorrow when they talk about that play. Nope. <laughs> but the clock continues to run halfway through the fourth quarter. Green on the roll, pressure again, gets it off, and it's nearly picked off by Barber. Contact with Rondé Barber and Marcus Hinton down around the Virginia five, and Barber comes up with it looks like a cramp. Yeah, he's trying to kick it out. But I'd go at, if I'm Clemson, I want to go right back at him and hope that that cramp is still cramping. Either a cramp or a twist of the ankle. He doesn't want to come out of the ball game. Well, I throw right at him. I go right at 19. And now he is going to come out of the lineup, I think. Yep. yep. Now can he get off in time? Sam McIver will come into the ball game at the cornerback spot. Green looking to the end zone for Horn. Intercepted Paul London. Second interception of the day for the Virginia defense, their fourth turnover overall. Paul London, the fifth year senior from Hampton, Virginia, kills another Clemson drive. Back here at Death Valley, Mike Hogwood, Rick Walker, and yours truly, Jack Corgan, Virginia with their fourth forced turnover of the ball game, gets it back at the 20 yard line, leading 22 to three. Tiki Barber dropped in the backfield by Brett Williams. Let's go back a play to the turnover from Paul London. You gotta be wondering, Tiki Barber, well, Rondé Barber rather, had just gone out of the game and he throws right towards the free safety. Got a little zone there. He's thinking, hey, I'm probably trying to get that out of bounds. One of the reasons why that Virginia defense has been so good the last couple of years, turnover margin. They're at plus nine on the season this year. Uh, Bethel High School in Hampton, they play some dynamite football. Barber trying to get outside, and he is taken down by Chris Jones. It'll be a third and long. Well, I watched Paul London's older brother, Mike, play football at the University of Richmond in the early 1980s. And Mike, now an assistant coach at William & Mary, he was a ball hawk himself. So it was in the family, yeah. the knowledge and the ability to do that. Little brother took notes. Virginia just content at this point to run time off the clock, not turn the ball over, pump the ball away if you have to. Virginia's changed a lot offensively. Last year, this would be Charles Wade right, Charles Wade left. Now they a few more options. But it's T.E. Barber left behind Daryl Medley, and he gets a couple before Mon Wilson makes the stop. That veteran offensive line of the Cavaliers did a good job against the inexperienced linebacking core of Clemson this afternoon. 
Yeah, they won it up front. They were they were patient. And uh, when you look at their third down efficiency, I mean, they weren't good. They didn't panic. And they hung in and made the big play. You know, Joe Kreback, now part of the Cavaliers staff, quarterback guru, formerly head coach of the University of Maryland. And he really enjoys working with Mike Rowe. And he says to Mike, is, Mike's going places. You can credit Tom O'Brien, the offensive coordinator, and the line coach with some good work. They thought they had the block. Instead, Antoine Edwards is a pretty good return to the Virginia 40 yard line. But there is just five minutes and 11 seconds to play. Clemson is running out of time. Well, it's bad enough your team's trailing, but you got to sit in the rain and watch it as well. Yeah, that's a loyal gonna, fan. That's right. <laughs> Matt Reeves still wondering how he did not block this punt. Well, you know what? He came in like it was a right-footed punter. Yeah. He ended up shy of the effort. You got to go and try to take that ball right off the punter's foot. That's your aiming point, not where he's standing. Green with time, but nobody open, so he'll run it out of bounds inside the Virginia 35. 5.04 to play. Nilon Green learning on the job. Tommy West said he played very well against Western Carolina and Wake Forest had good points and bad points in the Florida State game and I think you'll see more of that kind of assessment following this game for the sophomore well, 15 at 25 239 yards last week in the air and he's gonna have a bright future here at Clemson they're gonna get in a position to win a big one before he graduates movement again on the line they've got Two young quarterbacks, Billy Lucky out of Fort Walton Beach, Florida, 6'2", 205 pounder, and they call him Billy Gun because he can like really full bring start it. I got a on the offense, the five yards, still second down. They also like a freshman out of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, Brandon Streeter. Mm -hmm. So there is a growing quarterback stable for Tommy West. A lot of people wanted Mr. Lucky. Twelfth penalty. That's not something that Tommy West wanted this afternoon. No. Second and nine. Green going downfield for Horn. Caught it out of bounds. Good catch by Tony Horn, but he was out of bounds. As Paul London and Joe Crocker provided the coverage. When you look at Horn, Jack, Wyatt. I mean, they've got the wide. They've got the skilled people. It's just a matter of settling down. See, that ball is late, and he's out of bounds. Still, terrific effort. Clemson sharing this field this year with the Carolina Panthers of the National Football League, and unfortunately, it seems like they've had more rainy games here than in long memory. To the sidelines and caught at the 30 yard line and that should be enough for the first down Kenya Crooks running a good bench route drive past the stakes break to the sidelines and cradle the football there you go coach I like that so you get made plus on that did everything right yep. including dotting the eye at the end yep. to keep the feet in bounds oh, that was sweet Rondé Barber back on the field for Cavalier fans he is the cornerback to the wide side of the field for Virginia Green on the pump fake, going downfield for Marcus Heaton, and that's out of bounds. Good coverage by Joe Crocker. Wayne Ashman trying to pick up another sack. Boy, Joe's had a heck of a game. He might be in line for a few Cavalier defensive awards when this, is, you know, coaches sit down and watch the films. He's got a fumble recovery, an interception, been involved in a number of tackles as well. He is one of the senior leaders for this defense that really is young with the exception of the defensive backfield. Ellsworth, London, and Crocker, the seniors. They dump it out in the flat to Michael Allen. He tries to run by Wally Rayner. That's gonna get out of bounds. And did get, no, he did not get out of bounds. Clock continues to roll, four and a half to go here in the final quarter. And I don't think it was in his train of thought. You see, that's what it needs to be. Virginia talked very quietly about what they thought could be a very big season 
concerned obviously about that opening game with Michigan a game in which they deserve to win because they outplayed the Wolverines until the final 15 minutes. Allen is tattooed. Football came loose but he was already down in the grasp of James Ferrier. Ferrier hey he had that sensed out. You're right about the deal in Michigan and uh, they didn't have a full tank on that. A couple of key players don't play. But this young man right here, James Ferry, he is playing. See, there's no running back. He, he had a feel for that. He'll make it fourth down. Ferrier's tenth tackle of the ball again. Green trying to keep the drive alive, gets it out to Allen, and he may have the first down. Rondé Barber with a good open field tackle. And I tell you where they spot the sure. football, I think Rondé stopped him short. Yeah. Rondé Barber showing you it's not just thievery, but sometimes that extra effort and strength that can make the difference at cornerback. Yeah, but see, Allen has, you know, he's got to lunge. He's got to know where that point is and get to it, you know, with an aggressive attitude. That was two plays in a row. He really wasn't conscious of his environment. The Cavaliers will improve to four and one overall and three and oh in the conference and then head home to face Wake Forest next week our ACC game of the week and feeling pretty good about its chances to be a prime contender to stop Florida State's unbeaten string in conference play Daryl Medley. Well, told by all. Tom O'Brien, stay in bounds. Oh, yeah. yeah, they've got all the ingredients. That young lady's not too happy. And if I'm a Clemson fan, I don't blame her. We are three minutes away from the end of the curse, at least as far as Cavalier fans are concerned. They have never won in Death Valley. They had a tie, a tie they considered a loss a couple of seasons ago. But now they are finally going to taste the sweet taste of victory in Clemson, South Carolina. And this series has been in place since 1955. That was a grand year. Medley again, just straight ahead. Andy McCrory on the stop. Think about that Michigan loss. I'm sure they traded in for Florida State victory. And it'll be one of the reasons, should they beat Florida State, that Michigan experience will be one of the reasons why. Well, Rick Lance, the defensive coordinator, told us this week that they were concerned about whether the young kids would be ready defensively and didn't play them that much in the game. And late August game, hot game, felt the defense wore down in that one and allowed Michigan to come back. The Jamie Sharper injury forced them to play the youngsters and found out the youngsters can play. Oh, no, they can play. Maybe sooner than they thought. Rainer and Poindexter, these kids are going to be there for a long time. And Florida State, the most impressive offense I've ever seen. But defensively, they're still trying to get it together. And they have to deal with the Cavaliers' high potent offense. And the secondary, where the strength of the Cavaliers matches up one-on-one. -on -one against the Seminole strength. So it has all the makings of a King Kong Godzilla matchup. Medley is shy of the first down, so it means that Virginia will either punt it away or go for it. My guess would be they will punt it away. We're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit about the Cavaliers, of course, because they've got Wake Forest, North Carolina, and Duke in conference play. And then a game at Texas yeah. before they come back and play Florida State. But they play Florida State at home in early November on a Thursday night after a bye week. So they will have plenty of time to prepare for the Seminoles as well. Well, we can get ahead of ourselves. We're not coaches. That's, That's the beauty right. of it. Yeah. <laughs> We're just <laughs> speculating fans. There right. you go. <laughs> Bryce gets the kick away. And that's all they were concerned about. Get the kick away and gets another decent bounce. 34 yard line is where Clemson will get it with 76 seconds to play in this one. And George Welsh still does not want to relax. Better not. <laughs> of course, George reacted so strongly at the end of the NC State game. Oh, yeah, that was nice to see. Bad knee 
in all still have the good vertical leap as Kentucky still holds the edge on South Carolina in the fourth quarter and Curry NC State's offense struggling at home against Baylor Baylor's got good defense Virginia Tech trying to knock off the Miami Hurricanes Green to Wyatt out to the 43 yard line a yard or two shy of the first down Joe Crocker there again clock continues to roll down to one minute to play in this one still I'm very curious about Duke and Maryland I think that's going to be well the ball game good game tonight up in College Park mm -hmm. best test yet for Mark Duffner's improving Terrapins and can Fred Goldsmith continue the magic that he brought back to Durham last season yeah he's a good coach Green going downfield for him. Crocker had his second interception and couldn't hang on to it. Joe with a little bit of a grin as he realized, hey, I could have had that one. Boy, the stats. They got stats are gonna be really nice. DBs, man, that's just what you practice for. Last year, last year, Joe Crocker became only the fourth man in the history of the NCAA to score touchdowns on an interception, a kickoff return, and a punt return in the same year. Only the fourth in the history of college football. That's you really something. You didn't do that at Cornell? No. Are you sure? Yes. Or are you just being modest? Green pulls it down and will get the first down. Hey, for two years I was a wide tackle when they gave the ball to Marinero. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> How about Hogg? You think Hogg ever did that? I'm sure Hogg pulled that off at least once. He's being modest. Hogg was getting those aces. That's what he was getting on the tennis court. <laughs> they got the first down, but they're only 30 seconds and the clock is moving in this one. Experience for Nelon Green that will pay off down the road for the Tigers again going downfield and this time Crocker can't get it again. Joe was more the intended target it looked like than Kenya Crooks but Joe couldn't come up with it and I tell you what he will hear this from his friends. Oh yeah no the boys will be all over him in film studies that's they'll be saying butter what fingers. Well, he gator arm that one. But you know under pressure chances are he makes that catch these guys are just they're, they're ready to celebrate they're ready to celebrate but you can tell on the sidelines too they expected to win that you know it, it is not as big of a deal because they have bigger targets in mind yeah but still it's off their back now they can stop talking about it and they can re, you know build their program without this don't believe you know Clemson's been recruiting against them over this premise Michael Allen couldn't hang on to it and on a rainy day in South Carolina, the Virginia fans who ventured down to South Carolina in the far corner, whooping it up because it's over. The streak is over. This could be the last play of the game. Wyatt goes down. 41 yard line with one second to go. They'll stop it to move the chains, but once they resume the clock, that will do it. Now they start the clock, and that's it. Will Bryce, whose family is from South Carolina, enjoying it as much as that man. George Wells, his first win at Death Valley and the first win for the Virginia Cavaliers since this series began in 1955. Final score, 22 to three. The Virginia Cavaliers have knocked off the Clemson Tigers to improve to four and one on the season and three and oh in Atlantic Coast Conference play. the field and Mike Hogwood. We're with George Welsh now. Congratulations on you got You broke the curse finally here at Clemson. Yeah, I never believed in the curse anyway as I said earlier in the week. When we've lost down here except maybe for one year they've been better than us and they've played well. I think Clemson helped us in the second half. They had some you know 
And then the goal line stand, I think, was a key it was a key play in the first half. What about this team now, though? I, we noticed on the sidelines, they seem to have a broad and, and a big goal in mind for this team. This well, I don't know. We just got to take them one at a time and be smart. We got three straight ACC games coming up. This is our, we'll have six games by the end of September. You know, this is a tough road for us, so we got to suck it up. I hope we have some of our injured back next week. I tell you, Tiki Barber was running it today. Some great runs. That was yeah, a big he's, he's got a chance to be a great back. He's getting there. Mike Grow taking firm control of that offense. Yeah, I, I thought we need a little better offense in the second half would have helped, but uh, we did what we had to do to win. I think that's the important thing. All right, it's getting a little crazy here. We'll let you go. George Welsh, the winning coach today. 22-3 to was the final. Back upstairs to Jack. All right, thanks, Mike. 22 to 3, Virginia winning for the first time here in Clemson, South Carolina. That gives the Cavalier fans who came down a chance to celebrate. But as Coach Wells <laughs> said, Doc, you know, they got a stretch of conference games here that they know they've got to deal with before they then tangle with Texas and then Florida yeah. State. Thick of the ACC, he also doesn't want to celebrate with us. But I guarantee you, when he gets in that locker room, He's going to celebrate with his own because this is one heck of an accomplishment to come here to Death Valley and, uh, you know, and get over this jinx or whatever you want to call it. So the Virginia Cavaliers knock off Clemson 22 to 3 and the Wahoo celebration goes on down in the field. Back with more after this. Exxon ACC Game of the Week was brought to you by your neighborhood Exxon dealers and distributors who invite you to try Exxon gasolines with the power to drive down maintenance costs. Exxon, rely on the Tiger. By First Union, when it comes to service, everything matters. By Ford and your Ford dealer, have you driven a Ford lately? By Winn-Dixie, the low price leader. By Ice Brewed Ice House. Ice Brewed, so there's never any watered down taste. And by the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company, the vision to power your dreams. Well, the rain started this morning and pretty much fell without stopping throughout the day, but it didn't rain on the Cavaliers parade as they end their losing string here at Clemson, beating the Tigers 22 to three. And Rick Walker, during the course of the broadcast, you talked about your college experience with the UCLA Bruins having a really a streak of similar length at the University of Washington. What happened when the Bruins finally ended that long winless streak? Well, they threw apples on us up in Washington. <laughs> we got out of there and I thought it brought us together as a team, as a unit. We then had done something no other group of Bruins had done in a number of years and it really just gives you a little impetus to think that you're better. And I, and I think you'll see it in the following week, especially defensively. You, you get a little air confidence. Well, you have those fifth-year guys who are in Chris Harrison's position, six-year guys with Virginia, and they've come down here a couple of times previously with nothing to show for it, and they will savor being the team that beat the Clemson Tigers big win. for the first time in the history of this rivalry, and it's a little bit of uh, uh, down-the-hill sliding going on here in Clemson. Let's take a look at our players of the game, our Jefferson Pilot sports players of the game, and Patrick Jeffers came in with 112 yards receiving. He picked that up today in four receptions, including the big reception of the ball game, the 71-yard touchdown that occurred after Clemson had cut the gap to 12 to 3. That was the big play of the game and Raymond Priester showing Tommy West that he has got somebody solid there at the tailback spot as he gained 118 yards on the afternoon. He's a man. I mean Priester and Jeffers two guys that are going to play a lot of football and be hard pressed to keep them off that all AC honors towards the end of the year but we saw some we saw some promise. Uh, Clemson's got a lot going for it. You just got to mature and get a little you know a little older at the quarterback spot. Well a guy who has grown at the quarterback spot for Virginia Mike Grow engineering the victory here this afternoon and Mike Hogwood caught up with him down on the field. Mike you've really taken control of this offense and you really have things going. here. Yeah we've got it going here pretty good. It's a great win for our team. The guys on defense fought hard in the fourth quarter there on the field most of the game and the guys up front gave me all kind of time to throw the ball today. The 
pass to Patrick Jeffers, maybe a key in the game. Everybody was nickel and diamond, and that was a huge play early. There's no question about it. You know, we had been about three and out a couple times in a row, and that was a big play for us to get some more points on the board. And, you know, our defense just uh, held the lead for us and played great in the second half. What about this team overall now? After the opening loss to Michigan, you have really started to play well. Yeah, we have, and uh, I think we played really well against Michigan. Um, thing, things just didn't work out in the last couple seconds there, or else we'd be undefeated. But we've got a really good team, and we just got to keep trying to get better every week. Wake Forest coming up, a couple of big ACC games. This team, I know you were breaking a curse here today, but you seem focused and intent on much bigger things down the road. This is not a team that's getting overly excited here. No, this is just one win and just happens to be here in Death Valley where, you know, University of Virginia's never won before. It's a great win for our program. Um, some they, can, they can't hold over us anymore, and uh, every game's a big game, so we got to get ready for Wake Forest next week. Mike, will let you get to the locker right. room. It's raining. Congratulations. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Great effort by Mike Rowe indeed, and as we take a look at the final numbers from this ball game, I think we see a couple of things. The fact that Virginia was impressive when they needed to be because they didn't have the ball as often as Clemson did, and the, the two numbers highlighted, the two categories highlighted really the the, the problems for Clemson today. Says it all. I mean, you give the football up to a team with a better offense uh, is a no-no. 12 penalties, 74 yards for the Tigers, and they happen in third down situations uh, half of those times. And that's just not going to get you a victory. I don't care if you've got a jinx going for you playing a Death Valley or not. Time after time, the penalties really hurt the momentum and the field position of the Clemson Tigers here this afternoon. But they'll try and regroup and get themselves ready for next week when they will try and get things going their way when they play at NC State. So hopefully Tommy West and his crew will learn from this one and move on from there. Virginia, a winner over Clemson here this afternoon, 22 to three, will return after these messages from your local ACC station. All right, folks, welcome back. 22 to 3, our final score here at Municipal Stadium. I'm Rick Walker. Mike Hogwood is on the sidelines. It's been a pretty wet day, but effective day for the Virginia Cavaliers. Hog? Well, I'll tell you what, it was an effective day, Doc, and despite Virginia it really seemed to be able to take this weather and use it to a positive way. Now, you thought the Clemson Tigers might do it because they played in the rain a week ago when they were in Winston-Salem, North Carolina at Wake Forest, but were not able to generate any offense today. And certainly when the first half might grow with the touchdown and Tiki Barber with the score, and then in the second half when they came up with the field goal, they were Clemson to make it 12-3. We thought this might be a game, but it just wasn't to be. Some of the faithful leaving here, and this is truly one of the great sites for a college football game. Great atmosphere again today despite the rain. Great crowd here and as we talked about it early in the broadcast, Tommy West has done a great job in rejuvenating the Clemson spirit and getting the Clemson faithful really into it. Even despite this loss today and despite the loss to Florida State and the fact that they have a 500 record right now, Clemson followers really believe that Tommy West is the man to get the job done and to bring Clemson football back into national prominence and we certainly saw a lot of uh, hopeful things out there today for Clemson and maybe who knows that might be a future Clemson star right there as one of the many fans one of the neat traditions they have here after the game they do allow the players and fans to get out here and run on the field just a little bit and they have done that and uh, many of them now are trying to get out of the rain though and head home our final score here today 22 to 3 Virginia over Clemson we'll be back to Death Valley in just a moment Carol, you. There you see the sign. It says Death Valley. And not an intimidating place today for the Virginia Cavaliers who have come here to Clemson and won for the first time in the school's history by a score of 22 to 3. Virginia improves its record now to 4 and 1. Clemson will fall to 2 and 2. Next week, remember that Virginia will be our ACC game of the week. We will be up in Charlottesville to bring you the Virginia Cavaliers game with the Wake Forest Deacons. The Deacons tonight will be trying to get their first win on the board against the Naval Academy and many people say that Wake Forest is a team that could jump up and surprise one of the conference front runners like the Virginia. We'll have that game for you next week at 
12 o'clock noon. So we'll hope you'll join us for that as Jim Caldwell is really doing a job for Wake Forest trying to get that program turned around and head in the right direction. And you know George Welsh, who had that scowl on his face all day today, but he was a smile at the end of the game as the Cavaliers behind the passing of Mike Groh and the running of Tiki Barber and the receiving of Patrick Jeffers have come away with a big win here in Clemson this afternoon. The final score, 22 to 3. A win that might just move the Virginia Cavaliers into the nation's top 10. in Virginia from Charlottesville. Hope you'll be with us next Saturday at 12 noon. Jefferson Pilot Sports personnel outfitted by Lee Apparel, the brand that fits. You've been watching exclusive coverage of Atlantic Coast Conference football brought to you by Jefferson Pilot Sports. <laughs>